number of guys? Well, we're, uh, we're going to go through the weekend here. We lost, uh, obviously, Butch Baird last weekend. Um, so he'll be out. He won't pitch. We're hoping that maybe next weekend we'll get him back, but that's uncertain. Michael Klein, who's been out the last few weeks on the mound, he might make a return uh, this weekend, but it'll be probably very, very limited, if, if at all. And then, obviously, we lost uh, Nick Bredesen earlier in the week. He got DQ'd for the season uh, because of a shoulder issue that he – He's been battling for the last couple of years, and they've, they've now said that he's just done. And then uh, yesterday we had uh, Trevor Hafner. Uh, hurt himself during a weight workout and strained his throwing shoulder, and he'll be out all weekend as well. So we'll be trying to mix and match some things this weekend as we navigate through it. Well, as you do that, this is in totality eight games in nine days. So you want to play in the next level, guys? Well, this is what it's going to be like in a lot of situations where you might not have an off day for a long time, but certainly an eight and nine is possible there. How do you manage that even without injuries? What has that done to your ball club from a health standpoint, from a bounce back standpoint, and then from a managing standpoint? Well, the tough part is, is when you run into injuries, you lose depth. And when you lose depth, you can't mix and match some lineups to to combat the amount of games that we've had to play. Um, so all that being said, it's, it's a real challenge that way. And, you know, our guys are just going to have to kind of work through it. I mean, that's that's part of the deal. Um, you know, it's going to be a real test of some toughness for us, you know, just being able to maintain a level of concentration and a quality of play as we navigate through what's going to be essentially three games in a 24-hour period this weekend. Uh, Eastern Michigan comes in. Obviously, we saw some of the bad, but then – some really great against Eastern Michigan last year. It was a turning point, that series that you were swept in at Ypsilanti and then seeing them in the championship game last year and now seeing them again here brings some memories back. It does. You know, when we were at their place last year, I mean, that they uh, they really they put some runs on the board against us. They had to come from behind win. Um, it was a frustrating weekend for us at a point where we really felt like we had to get something done up there. And so um, when we saw them in the conference tournament, quite frankly, I was – I wasn't sure if we wanted to face Central or Eastern, you know, in the final. And uh, it ended up being Eastern, and we were lucky enough to, to get them. Uh, but, you know, they've got a, real, a whole new team almost this year. I mean, they've got a lot of different bodies out there, uh, as do we. And so it's, it's the two teams are playing, but I think there's a lot of different personnel that weren't even involved in last year's game that are going to be involved in this weekend series. Uh, taking a look at what they've done non-conference-wise to go to Stillwater and win the series there. They also knocked off 20-win Ohio State. They've won two of the first three MAC weekends. What are you seeing from them that's allowed them to, to have some success? Well, they, they do a good job as far as balancing their offense. I mean, they can run. they got guys that can hit for a little bit of power. They, they function really, really well as an offense, which is what made them challenging last year to deal with as we tried to pitch. Um, and then, obviously, defensively, they play exceptional defense. I mean, they're feeling like 970-something right now. So, you know, they do the things that winning teams have to do. It's play team offense, play defense, and have your pitchers throw it over the plate. And They're, they're a good ball club. They're going to be a handful. You just going to sleep in your office tonight and then wake up and go for it again tomorrow? That's pretty much how it's going to be. Hopefully, we have a quick game tonight and we can get, uh, get back at it. Right now, we're scheduled to start at 9 o'clock tomorrow to avoid the rain. But we're looking at the forecast. There may be a chance to move it. Uh, back another hour perhaps and start at 10. So we'll make that decision a little bit later today. Well, hopefully you can sleep in then. Good luck. All right, thanks, Rob. That's head coach Rob Smith. And if you're ready, here are today's starting lineups. First for the visitors from Ypsilanti, Michigan, the Eastern Michigan University Eagles and their first-year head coach, former assistant Eric Roof. Leading off and playing in center field is Nate Jones. It's 250. Their best hitter in the lineup and one of the best in the league is Max Schumann. 371 hitting shortstop. He bats second. In the three-hole tonight, Zach Owings. Top 10 hitter in the league with Tanner Picknick from Ohio. He's one of four. Tied for seventh in the league in uh, hitting and he hits third. He is a sophomore first baseman. Cleanup hitter is Jeff Timko. Timko is 19 runs batted in this year. He has seven doubles. Eli Gora hits fifth. He is the catcher, a 250 hitting catcher. Colton Schenker hits sixth. He's hitting 263. He's their DH. In the seven hole is Nick Jones, 222 hitting third baseman. Devin Hager hits eighth, their second baseman, hitting 261. And rounding out the lineup is Shane Easter.
184 hitting freshman right fielder. Justin McMurtry's on the mound for EMU. He's 3-4 with a 3-6-5 ERA. Now for the Bobcats and head coach Rob Smith. Leading off and playing in center field is Devin Garcia. New average at 254. Michael Klein not pitching this weekend, but he will go on the DH side, and he hits second. In the three-hole, Rudy wrote, one of the best hitters in this league, hitting 358. Tanner Picknick, the cleanup hitters in left field. Aaron Levy at second. Tony Giannini at third, hits sixth. Right fielders, Ryan Sargent, hitting seventh. Hitting eighth is Dan McCauley. And Traben Funderburg is the shortstop, hitting eighth. On the mound, Jerry Salisbury. First pitch comes at 6 o'clock at 85 degrees in Athens with the sun shining. Lights on at the Wren. Enjoy the broadcast in the ball game, everybody. As in the box is Nate Jones. Flares one foul to start it off, and we're off to the races. Game one of this three-game series and meeting number 118 all-time between these two schools. The next one is a ball wide. It is one and one. Jones hits 250. No home runs, nine runs batted in. This is one of the best stealing teams in the country. Line drive to center. Garcia to his left makes a head-high one-handed catch. And that's the first of hopefully just 27 outs in this ball game today recorded by the Bobcat defense. There's one up, one down. Here's Max Schumann, 371 hitter. The junior hits on the right side, has four home runs, has 12 doubles, has 21 runs batted in. Schumann is in the top three in a multitude of categories. He's a good one. Junior shortstop and he eyes one high. It is 1-0 from Jerry Salisbury. Salisbury and the Bobcats working with a reworked starting rotation this weekend because of injuries. There's the strike. It is 1-1. One one. No Michael Klein in the starting rotation of course and no Butch Baird on game three. And so Ohio's going to have to rework two and three in the rotation. Next one clips the inside corner. Schumann didn't like the call, and it is one and two. Brilliant sunshine, just a couple of wispy clouds overhead, powder blue skies. It's going to change over the rest of the weekend. One, two's popped up. In on his hand, should be playable. Near the Bobcat dugout, coming in Giannini, and he makes the catch. And there's two up, two down, and that's the... First job, and a good job, against one of the best hitters in this league in Schumann. And here is Zach Owings, who is almost as good, hitting 356. This is a pretty good 2-3 and three in their lineup. He has 14 runs batted in and a home run. Eastern, the top hitting team in this league. Ohio's right up there. So 1-2 and two in the league. Ohio number one in pitching. Eastern is seventh. Breaking ball strike to the left-handed hitting Owings. Dimensions at the Wren, 340 down the lines, 380 to the alleys, 405 to center, about a nine-foot high green outfield wall. Next one's outside. It's one and one. Two gone. Base is clear. Top of the first. Salisbury trying to spin a one-two-three rack against a good top three in the lineup. This one smoked to second. Played favorably by Levy. A Sunday hop on Friday night, and that's a 1-2-3 inning. Asking you shall receive as quick as that. Nothing for the Eagles. Ohio coming up. Thanks for joining us from Athens. We bring the sunshine and the warm temperatures to you, even if it's raining and snowing and in the 40s or 30s, wherever you are. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.
And then a nine inning game to follow. That will be the finale of the series. So this is an interesting weekend at the Wren for both Ohio and EMU. Bobcats in the crisp new Adidas whites, the 80s style. Bobcat uniforms and Devin Garcia steps in and swings for the fences on pitch one. Comes up empty, it's 0-1. The fleet-footed center fielder is 33 for 130 as the first B of the season flies into the booth. That's a 254 average, has two home runs and 11 runs batted in. Chest-high fastball swung through from Justin McMurtry. 6'3", 215 from Redding, California. 3-4 with a 3.65 ERA. Works from the right, works quickly with nobody on, and that's flown foul out of play. It is Bark at the Park weekend, and so you could bring your dog out to the ballpark if you wish, and that just makes for a really cool environment. Everything's better with dogs, right? Hot dogs, too. The grill's fired up. 0-2 pitch to Garcia. Lays off the same pitch that he fouled off and swung through previously. It is 1-2. Eastern comes in with that 5-4 and four league mark, 11-19 overall. But that's a bit deceiving. 1-2 is rocketed to right center field. This has some carry. Jones going back. He looks up, and it's off the wall on a bounce. Garcia sprints around first and stands on second for a leadoff double. That's about as good as you could get to start it off. Garcia with his sixth two-bagger of the year. And here's Michael Klein. That's my favorite double celebration that I've seen early this season. He immediately kicked out like he was kicking the door open. It's time to get this show started. The Bobcats with an early double in this one as the leadoff man gives this Klein wrote picnic dangerous part of the order an opportunity to put some runs on the board. So double number five for Garcia. And here is Michael Klein. Hits on the right side, 220 hitter now. Three home runs and 19 runs batted in. Reaches out and pokes it foul to the screen. It is 0-1. Still working with that injury that he suffered at Bowling Green in weekend one of MAC play. And he's been in the lineup since as a DH, but he hasn't been able to hit. That double for Garcia, by the way, is the 14th in MAC play for Ohio. Klein with an RBI chance here to start it off. He has 19 of those this year. Close to the plate, back of the box, and the pitch is flared foul. First base side and out of play. With runners in scoring position, with runners on base, Klein to this point this year is, um, that's actually the pitching stats. With runners on, Klein as a hitter, not bad, 14 for 51. The next one's tapped foul. 0-2 on Klein. Lights are on here at the ballpark, as you would expect. The cherry blossoms have popped along the hocking, and they look pretty, but they smell awful. They'll hang around for about, I don't know, a week and change, and that's about it. That's a whole lot of off time for the rest of the year for the cherry blossom trees. Next one for Klein. Shot through the right side. Hole on a bounce for a base hit. Garcia gets the stop sign at third. Thought they would possibly test the arm of Easter and right. It's a good start. And two opposite field connections for the Cats. So Klein comes through there. Hit number 19 of his season. And here is Rudy Rote, who had the game-winning walk-off blast over Shawnee State the other night, 6-5. You celebrate the walk-off. You don't celebrate the fact that it took a walk-off to win over NAIA Shawnee State. But midweek magic maybe turns into a little bit of weekend mojo as well. That's the hope. That's a positive spin to it all. And they doused him with water as he went oppo the other night. So that's been a theme already. McMurtry in some trouble. The first one of the left-handed hitter has popped up back of home and out of play over our heads. Rudy wrote one of the top hitters in the league, hitting at 358. Has six home runs, has 25 runs batted in. Has struck out 18 times in 120 plate appearances. Runners on the corners, nobody gone. Bottom of the first, that hops in. It gets away a little bit from the catcher and eyeing it the whole way and going to second is Klein on a wild pitch. 
Gora shuffled to his right on a slide to try to make the play. But Klein, of course, with the runner at third, knew that he wasn't going to get a throw on him up the diamond. And if he did get a throw, there might have been an out, but a run would have scored. So now two in scoring position in the bottom of the first. And Rote licking his chops here in the pitch. Hit on the ground, a second will bring home a run, and it went under the glove of Hager and in the right. It's going to bring home two on an air by Hager at second, and Ohio leads it 2 nothing. So an E4, but initially scored a hit for Rote, brings in a run, and Ohio leads it 2 nothing in the first inning. So Rote with RBIs 26 and 7, they have changed it to an E4, and that's the right call. But no matter how you score it, Ohio takes the lead. Here is Tanner Picnic. Picnic's been outstanding this year, too, hitting 319, and the first one to him is a strike. And so McMurtry having some early issues here, Eastern's Friday starter. The opposition against him coming into the ballgame this year is hitting 316, so Ohio's picking up where the rest of the opposition against EMU is left off. Check swing on a pitch in the dirt. Pac uh, picnic did not go around. It is one and one. Picnic, Ohio's left fielder in this ball game. Can catch two. Tops his foul up the third base side. Ohio's been outscored in first innings this year. So that's a good script to flip in the bottom of the first inning. Ohio's been outscored now 28 to 17. Bouncing ball to the left side. That eight up Jones. Actually, he never got a piece of it and it rolls into left. Runners on first and second here, and welcome to the run. This playing surface is going to change next year. Also keep in mind that Eastern Michigan plays on field turf, and so they're used to traditional hops. Here it can have a little funky spin on you. Runners on first and second, nobody out. Ohio on top two, nothing here. Picnic reaches on the second air for Eastern in the first inning. And obviously the change in the playing surface when you practice on field turf and you play on it in your home games, then you come on this one, which looks pretty, but it isn't the best in the world, that's going to pose some problems. No, it will. And, and in general, you know, grass is going to have a different feel to it. But especially here at the Wren, we've talked about it over the years, the way that it plays. And like you said, Eastern Michigan has gotten a rude welcome so far. Should have two outs, arguably. Instead, there's two on, two runs in, and nobody out. Here's Aaron Levy, Ohio's second baseman hammers this one off of his left foot. It's 0-1. Hits 280. 17 runs batted in this year. He does have five home runs. And the home plate umpire is going to allow him to walk it off a little bit. Mike Martin's behind the plate today. Bob Howard at first and Brian Miller is in the rocking chair at third. On at second is Rote. Picnic at first. Still nobody out. We're in the bottom of the first in Ohio on top 2 nothing. Trying to set the tone this weekend after that midweek win and a midweek split. There's a strike. It cut across the plate to the left-handed hitter. It is 0-2. Ohio lost in shutout fashion to Ohio State 4-0 on Tuesday. So Ohio's been outscored 15-3 in the last three losses. 0-2 the count on Aaron Levy. And the pitch tries the outside edge, but that was way outside. It is 1-2 and two from Justin McMurtry. Coming a long way away to play in Ypsilanti, the senior right-hander from Redding, California, Northern California. Beautiful up there. There's hitting room in right center field for Levy. Ohio's gone the opposite way a lot in the inning. This hops in. Nice save by Gora. Two and two the count. Ohio dropped the series last weekend at Toledo after winning 15-4 in the opener, 3-2 on Saturday and 8-1 in the finale. After beating Northern Illinois the weekend prior, two games to one. Levy waits for McMurtry in the pitch, got under it, popped it up, a mile in the sky near the eastern dugout, and this is going to uh, land on the concrete, take a favorable hop, and a couple of kids chase it down. Two and two. 
this is about as good as you could start. A 1-2-3 inning that took about 60 seconds for Ohio starter Jerry Salisbury against some good hitters. And then you get some Wren magic on hops. And Ohio's on top 2-0 and there isn't an out yet. Levy's the five-hole hitter. The 2-2 pitch. Up and in. 3-2. and two. Road on at second, picnic at first, 2 0 Ohio to start. Bottom of the first inning, game one of the three gamer. Ohio trying to get to 17 wins on the year. And even in the first 10, Mack tries with the double header looming tomorrow. Levy waits, points that silver and white bat out to McMurtry, who comes set from the belt. And the payoff pitch with the runners holding, got under this and popped it up. Way up in the sky towards right. Easter comes flying in, settles under it, makes a head-eye catch with one hand in that tan mitt. Good thing he had his sunglasses on, and there's out number one. So runners stay at first and second. Here's Tony Giannini, who is uh, on the roster card today, draped in an American flag. From suburban Indianapolis, drove through there today. Could have stopped at uh, the Giannini house to see if he needed anything brought back for him. My six and a half hour ride back from Northwest Indiana this morning. Giannini hits 244. Two home runs and 14 runs batted in. Slightly open stance, rocks the bat low and waits for McMurtry. 2-0 Cats, bottom of the first. Chance for a big inning, and this is in the dirt. Gore has had a workout already. Knock that down, it's 1-0. Eastern midweek, lost to Oakland 4-2, and beat Concordia 6-1. They're at Toledo next weekend, then see their former head coach, who's an assistant against Michigan State, coming up. 1-0, in there for a strike, it's 1-1. Sergeant on deck, McCauley and Funderburg are waiting in the wings. One gone, bottom of the first, two nothing with the lead, Ohio trying to add. Giannini waits, here it is. Fisted foul, first base side out of the ballpark. Actually, it smacks off the top row of seats and rolls on down. You would figure we'd have a good crowd tonight. Weather in Athens, I think everybody's been starving for this sort of stuff. Sonny Sano's dog was just eyeballing me here. Doesn't know what to make of me. And ladies and gentlemen, the game can begin because Jason Arkley's here. And this is a line drive to left center field. It will be caught by Jones, hung up in that left center field gap. Makes the catch, no advancement of the runners. Tony G hit it hard, but Jones was able to amble over to his right to make the catch. So there's two gone. And while on one hand you could say, this is, uh, it's good to have a two nothing lead. The other hand, if you only get two runs here, it's an opportunity lost. Yeah, no, especially with nobody out and still runners at first and second, you'd like to put more on the board than that. Again, you cannot complain about an early 2-0 lead, but you want to take advantage of every opportunity you get. Here's Ryan Sargent, Ohio's right fielder, hitting 262, has 19 runs batted in, gets under this one, pops it up. This is on the infield. Eastern's going to get out of it. Making the catch is Schumann at short, and this one's done. Ohio does get two, but there were two Eastern heirs to help out. Ohio leaves two, two nothing Ohio as we go to the second for Bob Wren Stadium. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.
making us a part of your Friday night. With Max McDoolin, I'm Russ Eisenstein. Ohio 2, Eastern Michigan nothing. Back on the mound is Jerry Salisbury. Timko, Gora, and Schenker scheduled here for the Eagles clad in gray tonight. Jeff Timko, their left fielder, cleanup hitter, hits 327. No home runs and 19 runs batted in. Takes a strike in the outside edge. He's a right-handed hitter. It is 0-1. The next one from the lefty Salisbury. Strike in the inside edge. That's a generous strike zone tonight from Mike Martin, the home plate umpire. Some folks are listening to us in an Uber on the way to the Tigers and Yankees tonight. 0-2 popped up. This is into shallow left. Pickner will come in. He will eye it up and squeeze it for the out. And there's one away. Chad Bush, the outstanding play-by-play -play voice of the Eastern Michigan Eagles, didn't make the trip this weekend. They don't do all the games, but the ones they do, he does well. But he is on the way to see the Tigers and Yankees tonight in Motown. I have a gut feeling it's probably a little colder up there, isn't it? It is. It is. Here is Gora. Eli Gora, their catcher. 250 hitter. No home runs, does have four runs batted in, and the first one misses, it's 1-0. Pretty sure that is the first time tonight that Salisbury's missed where McCauley set up. 1-0, that's low and outside. Thought you were going to say that's the first time that somebody's listened to us in an Uber on the way well, yes, to that's Tigers, probably, Yankees. Well, that's probably true, too. That's probably the first time that anyone's, probably not the first time anyone's listened to us in an Uber, though. Next one's high, and Salisbury is struggling to find the zone against the five-hole hitting Gora. And he, he just signaled over to McCauley, hey, hit me in the mitt when you throw the ball back to me. There was one that he had to flick up into his hand, and then that one got away from him. 3-0 the count. One gone here in the second. And that missed inside. It's ball four. So a one-out walk for the Eagles, their first base runner. That is walk number 16 to go along with 36 strikeouts this year for Salisbury. He had 11 in the opener against Northern Illinois, and that was a career high a couple of weekends ago. Here's the left-handed uh, left hitting D.H. Colton with a K. Schenker. That's a good name. 263 hitter, five home runs, 17 runs batted in. Crouches back of the left-handed box. Whacks the first one down the line and left. Long run for Picnic, and it drops fair by a foot. Picnic couldn't get there, picked it up on a hop. Runners on first and second. If he did that 100 more times, he wouldn't have done it in exact the same fashion. But that was fair, maybe midway down the line and left by a foot. And so here, the Eagles have something going. Bottom of their lineup, here's Nick Jones, their third baseman. Right-handed hitter. Hitting 222, he struck out 22 times and 81 trips to the plate. He's walked eight. He does have 12 RBIs. So already a little bit of a jam here for Salisbury. Perhaps Ohio can turn a double play. The Cats have turned seven in MAC play. Overall this year, Ohio is number one in the league at 31. Maybe the Eagles will oblige. It's a top stealing team in the league. You wouldn't figure anything's on here necessarily, but they have been able to really fly on the base pass, and that's continued with their first year head coach, Eric Roof, who is former assistant, who has been bumped up. Mark Vandemede left to go to Michigan State as an assistant there for the Spartans. The Eagles have 61 stolen bases this year. Wow. And the first one from Salisbury misses outside to the right-handed hitting Nick Jones. By comparison, Ohio has just four in MAC play. <laughs> so you could do the math. Ohio's really not run all that much. 1-1 one, one, hit on the ground foul. Just wide a third. Actually, the crowd, uh, count is level at a ball and a strike now. When it comes to the guys on the base paths right now, though, a combined 0 for 3 in stolen base attempts this season. So what you're saying is don't expect a double steal here? That is exactly what I would be saying, Russ. Now, if it was Schumann, he's 16 of 19. He might be running from anywhere. 1-1 one one the count, one gone, top of the second. 2-0 Ohio with the lead on two Eagle airs. 
Salisbury from the stretch of the pitch. Lying down the line and left. Picnic long run. Can't get there. It will two hop. Now three hop the wall. Rounding third is Gora. He will score. Stop sign on at third is Schenker. It's an RBI double to the corner and left for Jones. It is 2-1. Ohio's once two were on lead has been shaved in half on the RBI double. The fourth of the year, the double for Jones. And so here's the nine-hole hitter, Hager. Devin Hager, their second baseman. Nick Jones with RBI number 13. So a base hit, theoretically, could give Eastern the lead. And that's why last inning had to be a big inning for the Cats. And while the lead was good, scoring just two on two eagle errors, it needed to be more. This is popped down the line and right. This is shallow. Sargent's coming over, and that drops fair by a foot, and the Eagles tie the game at two. They've had two midway down the line fair balls by one foot, and thus they tie the game at two. Stopping at third is Jones. Shanker scored easily from third, and already we're no better than when we started in the top of the second inning. One gone, we're tied at two. Here's the nine-hole hitter, Shane Easter. Their right fielder hits 184. Has four runs batted in, looking for his first home run. In fact, he doesn't have an extra base hit this year. Middle of the box, right-handed side, square to butt, pumped it up. Salisbury gets that gift out as he charges in and makes the catch about five feet away from the plate. Thank you very much. That is a key out. So now, as opposed to the double play getting you out of things, the lineup card is flipped over. Two out here for Jones, who lined out to center to start off the ball game. Two gone runners on the corners, top of the second. We're tied at two. Here is Jones. Where's 28? He's out of Battle Creek. Close to the plate. Left-hand side. Crouches as he waits. Takes one high. Looked okay. He's 6'3", so you would figure the belt would be a strike, but no. Dangerous spot to leave a pitch against a guy like this, too. Hitting 248, but this is it's a good lineup up top. Next one's high. It's 2-0. And really what I mean by that is you never want to leave anything high against a guy who's a little bit bigger. You can leave a pitch high against somebody like me. I can't get my hands up there. He just drops it right in there, chest level, and can rip one over the top of somebody's head. Jones at third, Hager at first, and the pitch. Swing and a miss. It's two and one. Another key point here. While there is a base open, it's not first base, it's second base. One of the best hitters in the league is on deck. You would just assume have him start off the third for the Eagles as opposed to batting with runners on in the second here. 2-1 pitch. Swing and a foul tip into the mid of McCauley. And Salisbury's a strike away from getting out of it here with two runs of damage. You figured that there was going to be some offense in this series with two teams that are at the top of the MAC and batting average and run scored. Big pitch here with Runners on the corners and two gone. Runner going from first, and this has popped up to shallow left center. Ohio's going to get out of it with a tie ball game. Garcia makes the catch in front of Picnic and left, and the inning is done. But the Eagles pick up two runs on three hits. No errors, two left. We have just played one and a half, and already we're tied at two. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.
Andrew P. up in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Chilly day back in Chicago where I just was. But 80 degrees, sunshine, and a summer-like Friday night in April here in Athens. Ohio and Eastern Michigan tied at two. And Ohio starts off this inning with Dan McCauley. It's 216, Ohio's catcher. Has eight runs batted in, has one home run. Ohio as a ball club has 29 dingers this year. That's hmm. tops in the league. Next one just missed from Justin McMurtry. So it's McMurtry to McCauley. And the count's level at a ball and a strike. You think the last pitch looked pretty good? Yes? No? Um, you know, well, the reason that I, I said hmm a couple of times is because it seemed like when we started this game, we were going to have a wide strike zone. It's yeah. been a little inconsistent uh, so far. 1-1 one, one definitely is a ball. Obvious. Not a breaking ball, low and outside. Hard to miss that one. But, you know, that's what people talk about. Umpires have different strike zones. You just hope that you get a consistent one. Two on pitch. Low, it's 3-1. and one. How many runs will it take to win this ball game tonight? Well, you've got two very good offenses, so it could take a lot. Uh, especially if Salisbury can't stay off the bat. 3-1 is sky deep to left. Timko goes back. He's at the wall, and that's gone. It's a Bobcat blast. 3-2 Ohio with the lead. Dan McCauley with a towering shot that just went over the barrier and left. His second home run of the year on cue. We talk about dingers, and there's the 30th of the season for Ohio. And the Bobcats regain the advantage here in the bottom of the second. You know, it's a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say it's ironic, but the way that that home run happened is something I was talking about earlier today with Lucas Moore. We were saying that, you know, with the weather warming up, maybe this team that hit a lot of home runs down south hits a couple more in Athens. Bottom of the lineup here, here's Traben Funderburg. Ohio shortstop is 1 for 12 on the season, has scored a run, has struck out eight times, hits here now on the right side. Two glistening white batting gloves with a red bat. And the pitch fouled back. It is one and one. That didn't get out of here by much to left, but it did get out of here. Just beyond the MAC championship insignias on the left field wall. One one, low and outside. Two and one from Justin McMurtry. You're going to need a short memory as a pitcher tonight. How many 1-2-3 innings will we have? Salisbury at a 1-2-3 top of the first. 2-1. Strike called. Good pitch. It's 2-2. Two two. So Dan McCauley with the solo shot. Next one from McMurtry. Eastern starter. Low and outside. 3-2. This thing's headed to a... 15-14 type of ball game. It does feel that way, doesn't it? Pay off pitch with nobody gone. That's popped up foul. First base side. Down the line and right. Long run for Easter. And he runs out of room. Oh. <laughs> wow. About five, six kids went down to the base of the hill there. And one stumbled and fell into another. And like dominoes, they went down. And Kid maybe, I don't know, would you say six, seven, eight years old? Oh, yeah. Comes up with it. Payoff pitch again. That's cued down the line and right, curling towards the corner and foul. That's what some other kids will uh, look like walking around at Palmer later on today, but that's for other reasons. So Stumbling it's, over one another. It's a fest weekend. Yes. Palmer Fest is tomorrow, but Palmer Place Fest is tonight. It. Yes. Yeah. It's an apartment complex that has a fest. Payoff pitch. Loving outside, ball four, and that's a walk to the nine-hole hitter. And no disrespect to Traben Funderburg, that's a good eye through the at-bat. But if you're an Eastern fan, you have to be wondering, you give up a home run to the eight-hole hitter and you walk the nine, and here comes Devin Garcia. Ohio has a chance here. Nobody gone, bottom of the second, 3-2 Ohio with the lead. Pitching coach visit here. Out to the mound, Spencer Schmitz. I'm sorry, this is a H.A. Actor, A-C-H-T-E-R their pitching coach. Meeting is short and to the point. Well, and, and another thing that's kind of interesting is we discussed with 
uh, Coach Smith earlier in the game about the to-be-determined third game starter. Right. You have a game like this where it is looking like it's going to be a lot of runs. That also normally means you're going to run through a lot of pitchers on both sides if nobody can uh, get strikes by. Throwing strikes hasn't been an issue, but these hitters are hitting them. Five runs already. We're not even through this second inning. So here's Garcia squared to bunt, puts it down. Down in front of the mound, McMurtry gives way to Jones, who throws to first, and Garcia flew down the line. The throw pulled Owings off the bag. Thunderbird takes second. It is an infield hit, probably, because I think Garcia would have gotten there. But we'll see for the scoring. First and second, the runners here with nobody out. And here's Michael Klein. So Klein bats, he singled in the first and scored. And they do score that in error, actually. Okay. That pulled the first baseman Owings off the bag. I, I should correct myself. I, it is not notated, and I, I couldn't tell by sight who Eastern's pitching coach is. Uh, Eric Roof is their head coach. Spencer Schmitz, who I believe is the son of Danny Schmitz, the head coach of Bowling Green, is uh, in his fourth season, A.J. Actor in his first, their graduate, uh, I'm sorry, volunteer assistant coach is Matt Rembelak. Last name sounds familiar. Owen oh, won the count to Michael Klein. So on at second is Funderburg, on at first is Garcia, and Ohio on top 3 2. Looking for more here in the bottom of the second inning. McMurtry from the stretch. Here it is. Klein takes this one to center. It's shallow. Coming in is Jones. Camps under it and makes a head-eye catch with one hand. That's the first down of the inning. Back to second is Funderburg, and back to first is Garcia. Here is Rudy Rote. I feel like this is a question I should know the answer to, but if, if it's an error, so it's an E5, does that go down as a sacrifice bunt E5, or is it just an E5? Because you move the runner over, and you're aboard. I don't think it is, but I'm kind of thinking that it should be. <laughs> well, let's let's talk through that here sure. in a second as Rudy wrote bats. He reached on an air in the first, and the pitch misses high. It is 1-0. Now, through the course of the play-by-play, -play, I can't wrap my head around that from a ruling standpoint, but the air means that you should have been out. And so that's a failed sacrifice because you should have been out on the bunt that you put down, right? No, because the if you if you get out on the bunt you put down, that's fine. That is the sacrifice. Correct. If the lead runner gets out, then it's no longer a sacrifice. And actually, I'm peeking over at the scoring over there. Garcia is one for one, so that does go down as a sacrifice bunt with an E5. Because it's just as yep. if there you, go. Yeah. you would have gotten it down and been thrown out but instead you've just beaten it out all makes sense 2-0 the count oh, I, I feel like I learned a little lesson for myself today and maybe somebody else learned a lesson too like I said I feel like I should have known the answer to that but the reason why Rembelak's last name sounds familiar his father was a head coach at Akron hmm. so I'm not going crazy at least tonight anyway 3-0 the count one gone, runners on first and second. A lot of hitting room in left center. The outfield's really deep. And he takes a strike in the outside edge. It's three and one. I was kind of wondering if you were going to revisit that or not, but I just kind of let it sit there for a moment when you said uh, the name sounded familiar. It just uh, occurred to me why it did. It's a big hitter's count here for Rudy. Three and one, the count one gone for one of the league's best hitters, and he pops this up. A mile in the sky, up into that powder blue, back is short, Schumann coming back, and he makes the catch. The infield fly rule was in effect, even though it was well out of the outfield grass. And so, that's a big second out. Ohio is on top 3-2 on the McCauley home run. And so here's Tanner Picnic, Rudy Road is 0 for 2. Picnic reached on an air in the first inning. So five combined runs, six combined hits, three errors for Eastern already, which is something that Ohio has done a lot this year. 
Picnic hits from the right side. McMurtry trying to get out of it. Drops to the side, and that one misses inside. It's 1-0. Oh. Yeah, he's been doing that a couple points when he's gotten into jams tonight. Uh, has uh, Eastern Michigan's uh, right-handed man, but it'll be kind of interesting to see. I think he's been more productive from that point. His breaking pitch looks like it's a little bit stronger from that angle. 1-0, oh, misses outside. 2-0 oh, the count. Hello to a former co-worker of mine and one of the hardest working guys in central Illinois, Greg Hallbleib. He does a lot of stuff. WJBC, great radio station in Bloomington Normal. I worked there for two years. You will not find a better guy in this business. He's just so darn nice. Thanks for listening. Might have hockey or high school ball or whatever tonight. Next one misses inside. It is 3-0. Two gone. Runners on first and second. Ohio on top 3-2. Well, the Bobcats got their runs in the first inning by being aggressive here in the second. They're giving themselves chances by being a little bit more patient as they've shaken up McMurtry. Funderburg at second, Garcia at first, Picnic waits, raises the bat high. McMurtry from the belt in the pitch. There's a strike, it's three and one. And that's just a get me over fastball there. Much needed, uh, especially with two outs and a batter like Picnic, dangerous and at the plate. Three and one, the count with two gone. Ohio on top 3-2, looking for more. We're in the bottom of the second. McMurtry from the stretch of the pitch. In the dirt, ball four, bases loaded. Ohio had bases loaded cracks last weekend in game one against Toledo. They won 15-4. So the Bobcats will hit with the bases packed with Cats one more time. You've got a guy coming to the plate who's got five long balls on the season and 17 RBIs. So Aaron Levy has come through in RBI opportunities before, and the Bobcats missed out on that chance for the big inning in the first. They have a chance to convert here. Ohio's 12 for 40 with the bases loaded this year. And the pitch to Aaron Levy is called a strike. That was up and in. Like I said, it's kind of hard to call this strike zone consistent so far tonight, batter to batter. Levy 0 for 2 with the bases loaded. Ryan Sargent, by the way, is 5 for 6. He's in the hole. On at third is Funderburg. On at second is Garcia. On at first is Picnic. Ohio on top, 3-2 in the second, and the pitch. Oh, we tried to rifle it out of here on a line. Came up empty. It's 0-2. Correct me if I heard that wrong, but did you say that Sargent is 5 for 6 with the bases loaded this season? I can't correct you because you're not wrong wow. because that's accurate. Wow. So you wouldn't mind a single and going station to station and to see him come to the plate. McMurtry in a jam. Levy waits and the pitch. They tried the outside edge, but that was in the right-handed batter's box. One and two. They've gone to that pitch a couple times on two strike counts, and the Bobcats have been wise to lay off. When that pitch is a ball all the way, hitters normally are going to show discipline on it. One and two the count. Well, Iowa two in the first and one here in the second. Looking for more in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Swung through a breaking ball. McMurtry made the pitch. Levy swung through it. Ohio gets one. Leaves three. Five left on the night. We're through with two. The solo shot by McCauley gives Ohio a 3-2 lead as we go to the third. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB. That was really well executed. That's exactly what you're trying to do.
Marcus, Max McDoolin. And time has been called because those kids from earlier, I think, had decided it might be fun to go hang out in the bullpen or something. They were in the right field corner. They were on the warning track. Huh. And nobody told them to get off the field. Then the umpire noticed it and said, all right. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know funny. what that was. That's rare to see. You ready to go with some play-by-play -play here? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm ready Are to go Are you done here. texting now? Yeah, no, I, I am ready to roll. I was distracted by the kids down the line, and we were conversing about Joey Votto as the second pitch of the inning is over for a strike. And sure. I kind of wanted to see what the rumors are by that, so, so I did. I, I got a little bit distracted, but now it's no balls and two strikes. So it seems like maybe that was good mojo for Salisbury, who's hitting his spots here at the top of the third inning. Bobcats have retaken the lead. Line drive down the left field line. This will be out of play. So no balls and two strikes. I like it. Uh, McMurtry was working much quicker there at the end of the second inning. Salisbury speeding up his work as well. It, it seems like, I would say in these first two innings, when both pitchers have worked a little quicker, they've been better. It's when they've slowed it down and started thinking that they've given up runs. Called strike three, outside corner. Fastball that catches the black on the outside edge, and Salisbury with a much-needed strikeout there to start the top of the third inning. He went one, two, three to start the first. Maybe that's a sign of better things to come here in the third. I don't think you've unearthed a real deep, dark secret of baseball. No. If you work quick, good things happen. Work quick, strike out. This one's fouled back to the screen. And that one is indeed, so no balls and a strike. So ahead quickly once again, this time on Zachary Owings. And, of course, these are the two hitters in the lineup, and, and really the three, if you want to include Jeff Timko in that, that you've got to be careful with. And here is a pop fly left side, playable for Giannini down near the third base. Foul line, back of the bag on the outfield grass. He makes the play for out number two. So two gone. And so working very quickly here at the top of the third inning is Salisbury, who has given up two runs today on three hits. Bobcats lead it three to two. Bobcats scored two in the first. Felt like they could have added more than that though. They left two runners on. They left the bases juiced in the bottom of the second. Got a home run off of the bat of Dan McCauley. Nobody was on as that was the leadoff batter in the inning. That one misses outside. One ball and no strikes. Lefty looks in, does Salisbury. Here is the 1-0. Fastball misses high. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, that was a weird way to start an inning. You got kids down in the right field foul line towards the foul pool. Hey, get off the field, guys. Two balls and no strikes. Hitters count. And yeah, this fastball catches the outside black. Two balls and a strike. There have been some minor league games in the Midwest League where they've had overflow crowds and they seat them on the warning track and they have a, a roped off section there, mm. so the, the dimensions of the ballpark sometimes change because of the overflow crowd. Not the case tonight, though yes. we do have a good crowd here. Yes, we do. Three and one is a fastball miss. Now a flare down the right field line, it's gonna get foul. And so now the count is full, three balls and two strikes. Let well, us know where you are tuned in tonight. Well, Russ Eisenstein on Twitter, R-U-S-S-E-I-S-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. -S -S -E -E Max underscore Nope, just Max McDoolin, M-A-X-M-C-D-U-L-I-N. The 3-2 delivery, missed inside edge. I think Salisbury was hoping to encourage the umpire to make the call by trotting towards the dugout, but it did miss inside. So that is a walk. And just a couple of inches away from a 1-2-3 top half of this third inning for Salisbury, and instead he'll have to face at least four, barring a caught stealing or pickoff move. And that will bring up Gora. And there is a throw over to first base. And as we told you, the Eagles have been at or near the top of the country in stolen bases over the last couple of years now. That's been a trademark. They, they fly on the base pass. Pardon the pun. <laughs> you get it? Yes, I do. They're Eagles and they fly. Very good. Mm. I'm here all weekend, or at least through games tomorrow. We're going to have to get you a shirt about pun. There's a big lead at first base right now for Timco. Quick throw over, and it was close. A head first dive back in. 
I can be uh, very punny. I'm sure that you can. Big throw back again, and Rudy didn't even slap the tag on the base runner, Tim Coe, there, but he does really get out there quickly towards the cut of the grass. One ball, no strikes. Two are gone, though. Salisbury should be concerned about this hitter. Pop up, left side. Salisbury calls everyone off in foul territory. Will make the play halfway up the third base line. So it wasn't a 1-2-3 top half of the third, but it did go by pretty quickly. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Bobcats lead it 3-2. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
charge, but instead Hager underneath it for out number two. And so now that'll bring up Traven Thunderbird. That ball was hit as high and as the home run that Dan McCauley had earlier in this game, but uh, certainly not with as much drive as it's just a pop-up on the infield grass. Two gone, sidearm delivery fouled off. Looked like it bounced off the hip of Traven Funderburg for strike one. It all can happen pretty quickly, particularly with the first game of the doubleheader. Yes. With the puck drop tomorrow at either 9 or 10 o'clock. So you can win this series real fast. Yes. And Eastern will have a short trip to Athens. They bust in today. Here's the 0-1 coming set to the belt and a throw over. And the ball got away for a moment from the first baseman, Zachary Owings, but he was able to keep it close to him, so no advancement of the runner. I should, while that is true, they did bus in today. They actually bust to Columbus last night, yes. stayed in Grove City. Went halfway, or a little more than halfway. 0-1, yeah. and fouling it off of himself again for strike two is Thunderbird. Going to have a couple bruises from those. No, it really is, and, and Rob Smith was talking to us before the game and talked about how it's going to be a major advantage to whoever wins game one tonight because, as we all know, it's extremely difficult, or at least thought of to be extremely difficult in the baseball world to sweep a doubleheader. As it's 0-2 with two outs, runner at first base. Swing and a miss, but it's a drop third strike. They'll have to finish the play to first base. He goes about five feet from the catcher to his right. He'll fire on to first to complete the out. The third inning went by pretty quickly. We head to the fourth. The Bobcats lead it 3-2. to two. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WEB. There we go. The most trouble that Salisbury has had today is that one misses high, one ball and no strikes, has been, ironically, this bottom half of this Eastern Michigan order. He has worked well against the top half, but he walked Gora earlier in the game. He did pop out to end the third. That's the second single so far as this one's flared down the right field line foul, one ball and a strike. That's the second single for Schenker, who scored in the second inning. And Nick Jones, who hits now with a one and one count, doubled in the second. Turned about fair play because Ohio's eight-hole hitting Dan McCauley hit the home run. Indeed. So bottom of the lineup's doing well tonight. An eye for an eye. Here's the one and one. Runner going. Throw down. Going to be close. And they got him. Well, Out at second close, base. Max. That was a really great job there 
Dan McCauley popped out of the crouch. They should have had him, and they did. The throw was on target, and like you said, Russ, it wasn't close. They had him all the way. Not to throw you under the bus there, but no. as the play developed initially, I was right there with you that it would be a close play. But that was a heck of a throw, and the Eagles score, and they steal bases with accuracy, but gun down there. Here's the one and two, swing and a miss. So it wasn't a strike him out, throw him out, but real close to it. Two outs consecutively on back-to-back -back pitches. They get the stolen base. They wipe that away with a caught stealing instead. And yeah, like you said, the pop time on that is really what would be quick there for McCauley. It looked like it was going to be a close play, but instead he was out of that crouch quickly and firing. Got the out there. Fastball outside gets Jones. And so now just like that, there are two gone. And I said it wasn't going to be a 1-2-3 rack, but Salisbury might face just three. Bunt right side. Rudy Roach should be able to get to the bag as it was a flare to him, and indeed he does. So three batters are faced. A quick top half for the fourth inning. We head to the bottom of the fourth with the Bobcats leading 3-2. to two. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. His son is a manager and pretty good tweeter on this ball club. Tyler Eaton, former member of the Bobcat coaching staff, is listening in Cincinnati, USA tonight. And yeah, Friday night, checking in on Bobcat Baseball. Thanks for chiming in. You could reach us on Twitter if you wish. Max has the call at the bottom of the fourth. Devin Garcia starts things off here. He watches a breaking pitch miss outside for a ball. 1-0 to him. He's ahead. And a big swing and a miss on what looked like a change up there. One ball and a strike. As once again, McMurtry went to that low delivery to even things up here on Garcia. I see Ohio Athletic Director Jim Schaus and a green Adidas polo. 1-1 one, one is fouled out of play down the right field line. So now it's one ball and two strikes. Everybody's breaking out the shorts, although you didn't wear shorts tonight. No, I did not. I, I stuck with, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself for not doing so because it really is a beautiful day. Dons can now wear short pants. Here's the one and two, and that misses well outside. Ball all the way, two balls and two strikes. It was high, too. Garcia is one for one today. He doubled and scored in the first. It was a good start to the ball game. He put in the right center gap, and he had a sack bunt but reached on an error. Ground ball left side, going to be fielded by the third baseman, Nick Jones, and he throws on to first to make the play. It was on the ground all the way, and that's the first out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Five to three if you're scoring with us. And as always, if you are, then a round Super. of applause yeah. to you. You're having a great Friday night if you're scoring, listening to baseball on the radio. <laughs> I mean, other people might be going, you know, in Ubers, to, Somewhere. To, to Yankees. Tigers. Tigers yeah, games. Sure. Not you. You're no. cooler than they are. Here's that low delivery again. It's over for a strike. 0 and 1. We might be the entertainment. We might be folks be. Friday night. Indeed. That's great. Here's the 0 1 with one gone, and that's a curveball that misses well outside in the left handed batter's box. The hitter is Klein. He flew out to center field in the second, but he singled and was the Second run to score in this game for the Bobcats in the first inning. That's a ball down low, two balls and a strike. Did a good job going the other way in that at bat. Your mother is listening tonight? Yes, yes. My, my mom is listening in, as are my grandparents who are in town right now. Nice. In 
good old Hamilton, Ohio. Here's the two and one. That pitch misses outside as well. Three balls and a strike. I hear it's beautiful this time of year. Sure. Beautiful uptown Hamilton. Yes. They're doing a lot to the city. Good. Three balls and a strike with one gone. And that's a strike. Taking one step towards first and then being told to remain in the box is Klein. No, it's a good place. Three balls and two strikes as the count is full now. Grandparents have a cool place there, though, with some property and a pond. The three and two, ground ball, hard hit, third base side, fielded well over at third base by Jones. He fires on to first and gets Klein by two steps. That was a good play by Nick Jones over at third base. I would imagine here, after the errors in the first inning, yes. there were some defensive principles stressed in that first base eagle dugout where that ball was swallowed up well. He got down right. very low, alligator, Fired on, right. beat the runner by two steps. Glove yes. all the way down to the dirt. Yes. Two gone, lifted high and deep to right field, carrying back, and Rudy Road has hit another home run. It is gone. Just to the right of the true power alley at the 380 mark, and it was gone off the bat. Rudy wrote with his seventh home run of the season. He adds to his RBI total. It is now up to 28 after two runs came in the last time he came to the plate, so three of the runs today have come in on balls hit by Rudy Rote. And after midweek magic, he had a walk-off home run earlier this week. He adds to his home run tally and adds to the Bobcat lead. It is now 4-2. to two. You could tell it was gone right off the bat with the way the ball is carrying tonight. Not a great deal of win, but it's a juicy environment in Ohio's double-up DMU. And swinging on the first pitch here and a pop-up to the right side is Picnic. Calling everyone off as the second baseman, more behind the first base side and making the play is Devin Hager, but not after or until Rudy Rode is able to add another run. The Bobcats have hit two out tonight. They lead 4-2. to two. We head to the fifth. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. Four two had to play two games on that Saturday, and then lost to Ohio in the championship game, and had a lead on the Bobcats early on. One and two is the count on Easter. This is flared down the line and right, curling foul. That was a line drive foul. We'll do it again at one and two. 
But that's a lot of baseball to be able to get it done. Ohio, by comparison, had a tidy four-gamer in the MAC tournament. Ball State, Kent State once and twice, and then Eastern Michigan. There was an off day in there. Ohio won the first two games, of course, and then had the off day on that Friday. But Eastern, he went the distance. Next one's upstairs. It's two and two. And of course, some friends with their play-by-play -play voice and their SID, Greg Steiner, does a great job. But uh, I was at that park uh, on the off day, too. It was really amazing to see the battle back and the fight of that Eastern ball club. Next one's outside. It's 3-2 and two on the 179 hitting Easter, who popped out in the second inning. And then they were on top early. And Ohio to come back. Ty Black tied the ball game in the later stages, and then the Cats were able to win it comfortably at the end. Payoff pitch coming with Ohio on top, 4-2 in the fifth, and nobody gone. This is fisted to second. Easy pickings for Levy. Throws from the side, and they retire Easter by about three feet. One up, one down. So then you turn the lineup card over to get to Jones. Nate Jones, our center fielder, lined out both times to center in the first and second inning. So a lot of the guys from last year's ball club aren't there anymore. Uh, there are a couple, and they're 11 and 19, and that record's a bit deceiving. There's a strike. It is 0-1 to the left-handed hitting Jones. They started the year losing all four against Florida Gulf Coast. They lost to non-D1 Lynn University, 17-13. Lost a doubleheader to Jackson State. This has popped up to center. Moving back on it, now settling is Garcia. Makes the catch, head high with one hand with that black mitt. There's two up, two down. Here is Schumann, who's 0 for 2 today. They're 365 hitting, right-handed hitting shortstop. Yeah, you're talking about how that record is deceiving. I mean, Florida Gulf Coast Series, three of those games, FGCU won by one run, and Eastern Michigan is 4-11 in 11 in games decided by two runs or less. Here's the pitch to the native of Portage, Michigan. That is right by Kalamazoo. It's 0-1. So after that, their first win of the year was against Jackson State on February the 25th, won at 9-3. But then it got much better. Next one's high. Mm -hmm. Lost to then 15th ranked Southern Miss 9-4, but beat the Colonels of Nichols State 11-5, and then Ohio State 6-1 on March the 4th. Lost a close one to Dayton in the opener in Stillwater, 8-3. 2-1 one is the count now. Two gone, bases clear. Ohio on top 4-2, we're in the top of the fifth. But then they beat the Cowboys... Pistols firing 9-7 and 6-5 to win the series. That was their first Power Conference Series win since 2011 when they beat Kansas. And Oklahoma State is 7-2 and two in Big 12 play this year. Pop up near Eastern's dugout and it drifts into the stands. We'll do it again at 2-2. Two two. That's pretty impressive going to Stillwater after dropping the first game 8-3. But then uh, you fire it up and pop the pokes, 9-7 and 6-5. They went to Texas and lost all three to UT Rio Grande Valley. That used to be Texas Pan American. Mm -hmm. Had another game against Ohio State canceled, but then started league play as this is fouled off third base side. Lost the opener to Miami. 4-3, that was one of the extra inning games that you talked about, one-run games. Lost to the Red Hawks 3-1, but built momentum, beat them in the finale 4-0. Beat Bowling Green two games to one, beat Ball State two games to one. Split this past midweek, and here we are. 2-2 is low to Schumann, 3-2 the count. Bases clear, two gone, top of the fifth. 4-2 Ohio with the lead. And that is a summation of what Eastern's done this year. Their first year head coach. Bouncing ball to short. Funderburg has it. Strong throw to first, and they got him by half a step. Schumann was flying down the line. Funderburg in there for Hafner, who's injured. And that's a 1 2 3 frame against the 9 1 and 2 against the best offense in this league. 4 2 Ohio. We're halfway home on a Friday night in Athens on AM 1340 WOUB.
sauce on LaRosa's pizza. Tonight back home, Nancy Sargent, I believe the mother of Ryan Sargent, who is sitting third this inning for the Bobcats, tweets at us. Enjoying the broadcast in Loveland, a La Rosa's pizza. Couple of pops, beautiful weather on the deck. That's a great way to enjoy the broadcast. Thanks for listening. We do appreciate it. Your baby boy is going to hit third in this inning. Aaron Levy starts it off. The left-handed hitting second baseman popped out in the first, struck out in the second. Ohio's up 4-2 as we're in the bottom of the fifth. McMurtry still out there for the Eagles. Their 3-4 and four starter. This one's fouled back. This plane flies overhead. On a beautiful night. Powder blue skies, just a couple of wispy clouds, setting sun reflecting off of that green outfield wall as Levy takes one high, it's one and two. So Eastern is 11 and 12 after that, that tough start to the year. They're on the road next weekend against Toledo. This is fouled back, it is two and two. Two runs for the Bobcats in the first, one in the second, one in the fourth. Two home runs today from exactly who you thought. Rudy wrote, and Dan McCauley, the Damn. new Bobcat Bash Brothers. 1-2, got under this, popped it foul, third base side out of play. You know, you mentioned that McMurtry is still out there. You know, it's, it's interesting. You look at the numbers of this Eastern Michigan team and that high ERA, that has been the issues. When they get past the starter, it's not Luke Devaney or McMurtry. It's the bullpen that's had the issues. 1-2, swing and a miss, pulled the string on a change of pace. And a nasty. strikeout for McMurtry. That is his third. Levy goes down for the second time. Here is Tony Giannini, who's 0 for 2. Yeah, Base is clear, one gone, bottom of the fifth. 4-2 Ohio with the lead. Sorry there, Russ. That was just a very nasty pitch there. I love that when he's gone to that breaking pitch over the top more so than under the side, it seems to have better rotation. It's cliche to say you want your starters to go deep in games. Yeah. As this one's hammered on the ground to short, Schumann squares that up, throws to first low, but Owings crouches maybe about a foot above that dirt. Makes the catch, and that's the out. Two gone. Here's Ryan Sargent. But particularly when you've got an early double header tomorrow, yes. and in this league it is two nines, and that's the way it is across all of college baseball. But anyway, it, it would behoove both teams to have their starters go deeper. This is a bouncing ball just foul. Up the chalk at third. Had some pace to it. Sargent was first pitch hunting. It is 0-1. Yeah, you, you want to be able to save the good relievers you have, you have, which if you're Eastern Michigan are Scott Granzano and Mitchell Sparks. After that, everybody has an ERA above five. This is turned on foul on a line just up the line at third. So Sargent is really on it. Yep. He needs to be less on it. Yeah, seeing the ball really well, getting a little <laughs> bit too excited, getting out in front of the ball, hitting it hard. Just foul. too well, if there is such a thing. Got to be medium well here. 0-2, he waits on it. <laughs> fouls it off, just tapped it to the Bobcat dugout. That was a good protection swing there. The, uh, the catcher, Gora, had set up really in the left-handed batter's box, and that ball didn't break all the way there. And I think that for a second, Sargent thought it would and then tapped it foul. 0-2 pitch. That's in the dirt. It's 1-2. and two. I'm uh, hungry. Uh, two <laughs> nights ago, are you? my dad and I uh, had a good barbecue back home. and Very good. I think the 270th in the home they've been in over the last 11 years. Next one misses inside. It's two and two. And that was a good father-son time. My mom was out visiting with friends. We had a, a death in our extended family. Yeah. My dad's best friend of a lot of years passed away last week. And so it was good to be back home for that. That's why I missed the broadcast on Sunday. The funeral of Rick Schwab was earlier this week on Monday. And he was a guy that... I just love good radio, love good newspapers, love good travel, love life. I know he'd be enjoying this broadcast tonight. Next one's outside, ball four, good eye by Sargent. He was in an 0-2 hole, and he walks as a seven-hole hitter. Here is home run hitting McCauley. If he does it again, Ohio's on top, 6-2. That was his first home run of the year. His second, I'm sorry. So chances are he could do it again. Certainly could. Flag is just kind of hanging, hanging limp over the right field wall. Not much breeze here at all on a warm night in Athens. And the pitch misses a little bit outside. It's 1-0 from Justin McMurtry. 
This has to be the spot where you kind of start thinking about the bullpen. There's two gone. You're in the bottom of the fifth. You want to get out of it, but your, your pitcher's now thrown four straight balls. 1-0. That's high. Backside throw to first. Tag is late as Sargent dove back in with his right hand getting to the bag in time. I know my dad and, and mom are listening tonight back in beautiful uptown Malta, about five miles west of the Cal. Yeah, we get deuces up from Jim Schaus. He is uh, the coolest athletic director in the back, that's for sure. Just strutting on by. Um, but yeah, you have, you have moments in your life that uh, kind of bring things into focus and the importance of family and good friends and being around each other in time of mourning and, and remembering good things. And a lot of that's translated into this broadcast tonight. Fly ball to center, gets some carry on it. Jones drifts back in front of the warning track, and he makes the catch maybe a foot in front of the track between the 405 marker and straightaway center and the Bobcat insignia on the wall in right center field. So Ohio got a base runner but can't score. We're through with five. 4-2 Ohio with the lead on Eastern Michigan. Game one of the three-game series in Athens on AM 1340 WOUB. Dan McCauley showing some pop. Yeah. Twenty-seven games in the league schedule. Ohio trying to get to five hundred. Eastern trying to make sure they're above. The sixth. It's a big inning here for Jerry Salisbury. It's yes. Owings, Timko, and Gora, the middle uh, three of the lineup, who tonight is a combined 0 for 4. And Owings is 0 for 2. New average at 348. Left-handed hitting first baseman takes a strike. It's 0 to 1. He just continues to attack this middle of the order. Bouncing ball headed to center, and it's there. Had some pace to it. It was to the right of Levy. And that's a leadoff single. For the three-hole hitter, Owings, and here's Timko. Yeah, when you got a guy like that who's batting 356 coming into the night, a long ball, 14 RBIs, hitting out of the three spot, it's hard to think you can keep him off all night. And Salisbury did a good job of keeping him on his toes, but that time, after coming with the curveball, it was just one of those moments where I'm sure he was looking fastball, and that's what he got, and was able to do something with it that time. Timko. His new average at 323, right-handed hitter. Wears seven in green on the back of that gray uniform top. Green helmets for the Eagles. Timko from Rochester Hills in the Detroit area. Redshirt freshman, 6'1", 210. Double play would be nice for the Cats, and the first one is low. It's 1-0. Ohio looking for their first twin killing of the ball game. It would be their 32nd. Eastern with speed, so of course, it'll be tough to turn on them. They've rolled into 22 this year. Also have to keep in mind them on the base pass. They are now 61 for 89 in stolen sacks this year. Owings is 9 for 12. 1-0 pitch, he's holding, has a good lead. Breaking ball missed somewhere. That was a 12-6 curveball. It missed, I guess. And it's 2-0. That was about as pretty as you could make that pitch. You don't want to leave it any higher than that because it'll get hit a long way. 
in the last three seasons, Eastern's finished in the top 60 nationally in stolen bases. Throw to first, back in time just barely as Owings. Including third in 2016, 11th in 2015. They're 12th in the country and tops in the MAC. That's a fun category to be way up there in. Fastball high, 3 0 the count. Be careful here on their cleanup hitter with Gora on deck. 4 2 Cats. We're in the top of the sixth. Both teams have five hits. The Eagles have three errors. And two of them came in the first inning. And Ohio scored their runs on those errors. Had a chance for more. And hopefully that doesn't matter. 3 0. There's a strike right down Court Street. It's 3 and 1. See some shadows now out to the infield. Kind of a, a light, dark, light, dark, light mowing pattern on the infield. Throw back Owings back in time. Lights are on at Peden Stadium tonight, too. We see the sun brightening up the convo on the bricks of West Green. 3-1 pitch. Ooh, he tried to drill it out of here towards West Green and fouled it off. Tried to back foot that one. It's three and two. Yeah, it was a good pitch there by Salisbury. You got a runner on, you're in the middle of the order, but you don't want to be in a spot where you've got two on. So he challenged him with the inside fastball, and he just barely beat him. And sometimes you just have to win the one-on-one -on -one challenge when he knows what you're bringing and you know what you have to bring. The three-two from Salisbury, and they got him picked off. Throw to first and a rifle down to short, and the tag is late from Funderburg. The throw is to second. I said short because Funderburg took the throw, but it was off balance and low. He had to dive towards the infield grass side of the bag to be able to make a play. Not a force play, of course, so he had to try to wheel around and tag. But able to get in there was Owings. Yeah, that throw was just offline from Rudy. That's unfortunate there. Would have been a nice little stolen out for the Bobcats. But now first base is open here, and you still got the middle of the order coming. Bouncing ball to second. This would have been a double play ball. Instead, Levy retrieves that, throws to Rope, covering it first. And up 90 feet to third is Owings. That's the first out of the inning. Timko grounds out 4-3. And that's a huge swing right there, Russ, because you go from a moment where you have a runner picked off, and then secondly, like you said, a double play opportunity uh, is what that ground ball would have been. And instead, you have Eastern Michigan arguably executing well. They get the runner to second base, even though it was on a Bobcat mistake. Uh, and then ground ball to the right side moves the runner over. So here's Gora, who's 0 for 1 tonight. The first one misses up and away to the right-handed hitter. He walked in the second and then bunted out in the third. 4-2 Ohio, one gone top of the sixth. Salisbury from the stretch and the pitch. That's fouled off. It was the pitch that was inside. It is one and one. Major League games going on now. The Indians just keep on doing it. They're up 2-0 on the Blue Jays to start it off, and that's against Marcus Stroman. They've won five in a row. Reds are down 1-0, top of the fourth inning at Great American Ballpark. 1-1, one, one, popped up. This is into shallow right, way up in the air. Sargent charging midway into right, tagging at third is Owings. He's going to try it. The throw isn't cut off at the plate, and it's behind the left-handed batter's box, and that's how Eastern scores. It's 4-3. That wasn't all that deep. Sargent set it up well, but the throw was poor. And thus, the Eagles are down by one. Got to give Eastern credit on that because initially I thought there would be a, a start and a stop because it just wasn't all that deep. And Sargent has made better throws, but that one just wasn't accurate. So there's two gone. Bases clear, 4-3 Ohio with the lead. And here is Colton Schenker, the DH. Swings through a breaking ball. Lofting swing for the left-handed hitter. It is 0-1. Two singles tonight for... Colton Schenker. New average of 278. Pops up a breaking ball way up there towards second. It's a tough play in that powder blue sky, but the catch is made by Levy. Squeezes it with two hands, and the inning is done. But the Eagles score a run. On one hit, no airs, nobody left. We played five and a half, 4-3 Ohio. From the Wren, this is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.
For Eastern, three runs, five hits, three errors, three left. That's an odd line score. Bobcats have the bats in the bottom of the sixth, up by a run. And their starter back out there, Justin McMurtry. First pitch swinging, bouncing ball, weakly hit up the chalk at third, just rolls foul. It's 0-1 on Thunderbird. Traben Thunderbird. Thank you. I was a little late on it, but I, I got there. You got there. We were good to go. Everybody's there. Everybody's safe. We can go now. The ball is foul. Everybody's safe. 0-1 the count. Here it is from McMurtry. This is outside. 1-1. Now Ohio with the two runs of the first inning. Felt like there should have been more. Now they're just in the league with no insurance. Big swing and a miss. One and two the count. Home plate umpire saw that the scoreboard was wrong, so he throws up one finger on his left hand, two on the right. Here it is from McMurtry. McMurtry, and that drops low. It's two and two. Thunderbird, Garcia, and Klein scheduled. The next one's low. Three and two the count. He wouldn't walk the nine-hole hitting leadoff man of the inning, would he? Well, he's already walked him once today. Kind of leading off an inning after a home run. And he just, oh my. Oh. Fastball on the inside edge, apparently, and a punch out from the home plate umpire, Mike Martin. And... Not a lot of protesting coming from the Bobcat dugout, though from our vantage point, it looked to be pretty inside. But the Eagles get a call, and there's one down. Yeah, that was not a strike. That was well inside. So four strikeouts and three walks for McMurtry. Here's Garcia, doubled in the first, sacrifice in the second, grounded out in the fourth, pops one up here, foul ground first base side and out of the ballpark. It's 0-1. You see the reflection of the shadow on the right field wall now from the press box and the stands. Line drive center field hit pretty well to his left as Jones squares it up, makes the catch. Maybe about seven feet in front of the warning track. You see his shadow on the outfield wall. Two down though. Garcia hit that one right on the screws. Yeah, that's the second time he's queued one up to center. That one started tailing a little bit towards right center, which was similar to his double back in the first inning, but just didn't have the same tail off into the gap as that first ball. Here's Michael Klein, singled and scored in the first, flew out in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Takes what looks to be a slider, low and outside, it's 1-0. Bottom of the six, base is clear, 4-3 Ohio with the lead. Game one of the three-gamer with the doubleheader in the morning tomorrow to come. 1-0 got under this, popped it up. First base side, right side of the infield, Hager under it at the cut of the infield grass and, or rather, infield dirt and uh, outfield grass. Mm -hmm. Makes the catch and the innings done, and Ohio goes very quietly in the bottom of the sixth. Max has a play-by-play -play for you next. 4-3 Ohio with the lead on Eastern Michigan. From the Wren, this is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.
Leading off the top of the seventh inning, Nick Jones, the third baseman, he doubled back in the second. He did go down with a strikeout the last time he came to the plate. Here is Salisbury, comes set and fires, and the first pitch is fouled out of play for strike one, 0-1. Oh a, a comment here, Sonny Sandoz in the stands, his, his dog's on a leash. Now, Sonny is, of course, a, a, one of the best strength coaches in the country. I expected him to have a hulking dog, maybe, maybe a, a dog that's like 400 pounds or something. The yeah. dog that he has is uh, maybe 30 pounds. It was quite the opposite of what I thought Sonny Sano's dog would be, but he's a very good boy. Very cute. Very good dog. That one misses outside. It's one ball and a strike. Lefty delivers and trying to check his swing, but fouling it down the right field line out of play for strike two is Nick Jones. You know, it's interesting to see the, the dog selection of folks. And you don't really know a person until you see their dog. And now I see a whole different side to Sonny Sano. Oh, you have a big dog, too? <laughs> okay. He wanted to make that very clear. <laughs> Here's the one and two misses inside, two balls and two strikes. <laughs> so the, the little dog is quick at the to park. correct. Yeah, he's, yeah, you know, maybe he's just babysitting that dog. No, he's, I'm just He's got kidding. a weightlifting dog. Uh-huh. The two and two swung on and missed and holding it in the mitt for the strikeout is the catcher, McCauley, as he held on tightly there. And there is now one gone in the top of the seventh. Quick shout out, thanks to friends in Hamilton listening over at Minton. Appreciate you guys tuning in tonight to the broadcast to Bobcat Baseball as Ohio leads it 4-3 to three in the top of the seventh as we get close to stretch time. Russ is stretching it out. I'm stretching it out as well as we speak. But one gone, the lefty Salisbury has had a very good night so far as he stretches into the seventh, giving up three runs. There's a curveball over for his strike. It's 0-1. And when he has that breaking pitch that drops 12 to 6 working, he can be very effective. Here's the 0 and 1, and that's a curveball that stayed high, went back to the same pitch. And now the count is even at one ball and a strike. I was talking earlier about how the view here is one of my favorites, I think, at any college ballpark I've ever been in. As here comes the 1 and 1, and that's a fastball for a strike, 1 and 2. For those of you listening on the uh, YouTube broadcast, I think you may be able to see it or at least see it on fly balls. But it's a beautiful view as here's the one two popped up right side, shallow right field, and playing in already with Sargent. So he'll move in a few steps and right to make the play for the second out. But you have West Green, which has the residence hall, to the right of us. As you enter the ballpark, is the convocation center. You pass the softball field, which has a redone press box and bleachers over there. The stands have really improved over there. And then you get over here to the baseball field. And um, really a beautiful-looking diamond. Doesn't always play perfectly. We joke about that at times. It will be turf next season. Two gone. First pitch swinging popped up out of play for strike one. So it's a nice place to be. And when the weather is as good as it is tonight, in the high 70s, maybe mid-70s by now, there are certainly no complaints. And there are quite a few fans here today, even out on the hill, down the right field line, and a couple people on the hill and left. That pitch misses outside. It's one ball and a strike. You can see Bromley, which is a residence hall, up on the hill on the left side on Union. One ball, two strikes with two gone. As it catches the sun, the, what's left of the sunlight as it dips behind us with the lights on here at the stadium tonight. 742, first pitch coming a little bit past six. Time called. Salisbury was ready to go into his windup, and he shows some frustration. That's the second or, or third time that our home plate umpire has, has granted time. Definitely the second time, if not maybe a third time, where time has been granted very late on. And Salisbury a little bit frustrated that it's happened again, and now Salisbury begs the hitter to get into the box. He's getting frustrated with the amount of time it's taking. Here comes the one and two. He challenged him, and he was beat by the hitter. It's a double into the gap most likely. This should be extra bases. Garcia cuts it off quickly, gets the throw in, but it will not be in time. There is a sliding double, and looking right at Jerry Salisbury after that double as the two were making eye contact and kind of challenging each other is the hitter. And so sitting in at second base after that double, is Easter and the nine hole hitter 
is now aboard and sits at second base with two outs, and Salisbury fires the ball into his mitt in frustration as Rob Smith will take a slow trot out to the mound, likely, though, to just have a conversation with his left-handed pitcher as it doesn't appear that there's any action in that Bobcat bullpen. I think that he wants to take a moment to maybe calm Salisbury down just a little bit because the lineup is turning over now. And so there are two gone. Jones struck out swinging. Hager flied out to right. But Easter with the double into the gap as it went into the gap immediately. And now time is called and our home plate umpire will take Rob Smith off the mound. But for a moment, they will talk with one another as I think some frustration being expressed to Mike Martin, our home plate umpire tonight, about the time being granted and then about maybe the little bit of jawing that was done by the nine hole hitter Shane Easter out to his starting pitcher. And really, I, I think it would be hard to say that Easter did not get in the head a little bit of Salisbury. As I, I don't think that with one ball and two strikes, the pitch that Rob Smith probably wanted there was a fastball. But I think Salisbury got to that moment where, hey, I just want to blow this by you. You're frustrating me. I want you to get in the box. Kind of pulling a Justin Smoke of the Seattle Mariners almost. And instead, on it and doubling was Easter. Kind of baited him into the fastball. There's a curveball, though over for a strike as Salisbury has settled down well. He's in the middle of a very good outing. He's given up three runs so far. He's given up six hits. There have been no errors in the field behind him. He's got a few strikeouts on the tab as well. Not really a strikeout guy though. Swing and a miss. Change things up there. No balls and two strikes. And it would be big if Salisbury could strand this two out double at second base. Almost stretch time here at the Ren, but the Bobcats trying to cling to what is just a one-run lead, 4-3 to three here in the top of the seventh with two gone. And now Salisbury is ahead of the left-handed hitting Nate Jones. No balls and two strikes. Here's the delivery. It's high and outside. One ball, two strikes, and Jones was going to wait on that pitch all the way. It was a ball all the way. And so it is one ball and two strikes. Everybody plays straight up in the infield. Devin Garcia, the center fielder, is shaded to his right, our left from this view. So a big gap in right. Line drive, caught on a line by the second baseman, Aaron Levy. He pockets it for the third out. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Bobcat baseball on 1340 WOUB.
today. Rudy, that was his eighth home run of the season, by the way, uh, earlier as just a correction to that. And the first pitch to him misses for a ball, one ball and no strikes. The 1-0 curveball, it's over for a strike. And Rudy is very frustrated because Rudy is trying to call time. And so we've had an issue here in the previous inning where our home plate umpire, Mike Martin, granted time twice, very late, to the opposing batter that Salisbury was facing. Rudy Rote asked for time there, is not granted it. There has been some sincere frustration from the Bobcats in this last inning and a half on that note. Here's the one and one, big leg kick. Rudy Rote fouls the fastball out of play, one ball and two strikes. And Rudy's got to kind of try and not get that in his head. I thought that that situation would be re resolved because Rob Smith was laughing with our home plate umpire, Mike Martin, but it kind of pops up again there as Rudy was not granted time. One ball and two strikes in this lefty-lefty matchup. That's a curveball that stayed inside all the way. Set up outside actually was the catcher, Gora, and missing way inside was the lefty pitcher. Mitchell Sparks looks in. Here's the 2-2. That one misses outside. Rudy dropped the bat for a moment as if he was going to go after it and then held up, checked his swing very quickly. Now the count is full. Three balls and two strikes leading off the bottom of the seventh here for Rudy Rope. Reached base twice today. Once on an error that scored two runs and then had a solo home run. Here's a shot towards the gap. Left center field. Playing deep are the outfielders, though. The left fielder will make the play. And so Timko underneath it in that left center field gap in front of the 380 sign by about 25 feet. And that is the first out. And now here's the four hitter for the Bobcats, Tanner Picnic, who's over two today, has reached on a walk. So one gone in the bottom of the seventh. Bobcats lead it four to three. New pitcher in the game right now is Mitchell Sparks. The left-handed hurler has a big leg kick, and that one's fouled back 0-1. Again, kind of an interesting fact about him is the fact that he's given up 29 hits this season, but 13 of those have gone for extra bases. Whereas you look at somebody like Luke Devaney, a starter, who's given up 49 hits, and only nine of them have been for extra bases. So kind of all or nothing. This one ripped down the left field line, fair ball. That should be extra bases right there for Tanner Picnic. It gets into the corner, and he should be in its second standing, and indeed he is a stand-up double, and he kicks through the door and punches through it again in celebration at second base with that double, as that appears to be the Bobcat celebration when you get an extra base hit right now, is kicking through the door. And that could be a very important insurance run if the Bobcats are able to add it here in the bottom of the seventh. They lead by one, and with one gone, they've got a runner in scoring position. And here comes Aaron Levy, a guy who's come through at many points this season in RBI spots. That's the 14th extra base hit given up by Mitchell Sparks this year. 30th hit. That one misses outside, 1-0. Mitchell off the rubber, looks over to second base and really not concerned with Sparks looking him back at all his picnic. He just takes his lead because no one is holding him on. The shortstop is shaded towards him a little bit, but just barely. They pretty much play straight up. The 1-0, curveball, hard shot right past the first base coach and the first base coaching box. And that one's going to trickle all the way down the right field foul line. And so it's 1-1. One Single digits sit up on that board right now. One ball, one strike, and one out. The Bobcats would like to at least add a single digit in the scoring category in the bottom of the seventh with a runner on second right now. Tony Giannini is who waits on deck. Levy is the hitter right now. He's 0 for 3 today. He does have two strikes out, two strikeouts. This one's popped up, left side. Should be playable. The shortstop has to come all the way back, faces his chest towards the left field wall, and makes the play. That was a nice play by the shortstop Schumann out in left field, and Timko is shaded so deep in towards the left center field gap that that area of the field we've seen a couple of times 
where Timko and Schumann have kind of had to communicate very clearly with one another on who was going to make the play. And Schumann had it all the way. He had an eye on it quickly and made the play. The sun has dipped out pretty much all the way behind us. And now there are two gone with a runner at second as the lights are lighting the field here at the Wren in the bottom of seven. Curveball in the dirt, gets away, runner going. No throw to third base, but a head first dive by Tanner Picnic. So now that insurance runner at third could score on a passed ball, a wild pitch, an error, or a single. Obviously, the runner would have been going on contact no matter what from second, but now that makes things much easier with two outs. One ball and no strikes. The left-hander deals. Hard hit ball. Straight pass picnic on the third base line. Foul off the wall. And the Bobcats, who have come to the plate here, wrote picnic and Levy have all hit the ball very hard off of this reliever, Mitchell Sparks. Count even at one ball and a strike, runner at third base, but there are two gone. Cats lead 4-3, would like an insurance run. There's another hard hit ball foul just past Picnic on a line at third base for strike two. Tony Giannini is clearly on it right here. We'll see if he can straighten that out a little bit, maybe wait back on it just a little more. Maybe Sparks goes to the fastball here. Setting up outside is his catcher. There's a tapper, left side, on the ground. Should be fielded by the shortstop is. Schumann on to first, high throw, but they got him for the third out. We're through seven innings. The Bobcats lead Eastern Michigan 4-3. to three. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. Weekend pitched very well, and Ohio was able to get that win over Toledo, 15-4. There's a strike. It's one and one. In the game, Salisbury went six, gave up eight hits, four runs, two earned, one walk, and four strikeouts. Schumann, one of the Mac's best hitters, grounded out, struck out, popped out. 0 for 3, and the pitch misses inside of the right-handed hitting shortstop. It's 2 and 1. That was a pretty spot right there, inside edge, knee high. That'll freeze you as a hitter. Very, very tough to do anything with that pitch. Lights taking a little bit more of an effect. Gray and green batting gloves, two of them for Schumann, and he eyeballs a changeup that misses outside. 3 and 1 to count. 
Two Bobcats loosening up right now in the bullpen, so we'll see how long of a string Salisbury has here in this eighth inning. Salisbury from the wind and the 3-1 pitch. Strike, a fastball on the outside edge. It's 3-2. and two. Big moment in the ball game here. Three and two the count. Salisbury for Schumann. Here it is. Swing and a fly ball rocketed to center. Garcia drifting back. Now settles. He'll make the catch. Head high with one hand. So Salisbury shoots down Schumann, who scalded that ball to center. And Garcia tracked it well. One down here in the Eagle eighth inning. Here is Zach Owings. He can't exhale yet. His new average at 356, singled and scored in the sixth, popped out in the third and grounded out in the first. Left-handed hitter, no batting gloves. Wrists taped, and he swings through a breaking ball. It's 0-1, and he steps out of the batter's box. He's upset with himself, either for guessing wrong or missing the pitch. 0-1, same pitch, similar result. Called a strike in the outside edge, it's 0-2. He's just completely freezing him. He doesn't go back to it a third time, does he? i say a fastball up here, but we'll see. 0-2. He did it again. It's a pop-up foul ground, third base side. There's room for Giannini, and he stumbles, regathers, makes the catch. Two up, two down, and the two best that the Eagles got. A shot to center and a pop-out, and here is Timko. Jeff Timko, their left fielder, flew out in the second, walked in the third, grounded out in the sixth. 0 for 2 tonight. So combined, 2, 3, and 4 right now is 1 for 10. The best hitting crew in the MAC. Ohio on top, 4 3. Bases clear, 2 gone, top of the eighth. Salisbury trying to get through the eighth, and a strike on the outside edge. It's 0 1. Right handed hitting left fielder. Two batting gloves, kind of leans over the plate as he waits. The 0-1 fouled off, it's 0-2. Salisbury with three strikeouts tonight, 39 on his season. Timko has 38 strikeouts in 100 at-bats. So maybe 40 for Salisbury and 39 for Timko on this pitch. The 0-2 with two gone. Outside, not by much, it's 1-2. That was one of those pitches that clearly scare you as a hitter. Is that one totally blown by him? There was no way he was going to touch it, just hoping it was going to be a ball. The one-two. Swing and a foul tip. No, swing and a miss. And a drop by Ohio's catcher, McCauley, who fires down to first. And it's a strikeout. And it's a one-two-three inning. That's the 40th strikeout for Salisbury this year. That's K number four of his ball game. Timko strikes out for the 39th time. The Eagles go down in order in the eighth. 4-3 Cats in the opener of the three-gamer. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB. So Jerry Salisbury is sizzled through eight. For the run. Ohio trying to take game one of this very important series. Ohio was swept by the Eagles last year, and that really helped turn Ohio's season around. Ohio won four of the last five series to close out the regular season after that. Ryan Sargent leads it off against Mitchell Sparks. And the first one misses outside from the left-handed reliever for Eastern. It's 1-0. Oh. 
Sparks lets his left arm droop, comes to the belt, high compact leg kick, and the next one misses outside. It's 2-0 to Sargent, who's one for two tonight. Single in the third, walked in the fifth, popped out in the first. Hits here now in the bottom of the eighth with Jake Rowan about set to come out for the ninth. Strike on the outside edge, it's 2-1. and one. Scores in the MAC from today. A couple of double headers. Miami beat Ball State 17-6 in Muncie, and then the Cardinals won 13-12. Next one misses low, didn't miss by much. 3-1 the count. So combined, Miami scored 29 runs. Ball State scored 19. So that's 48 runs in the double header. Fly ball to left center. Coming in now and charging, and it can't be fielded by Jones. He plays it on a hop. I thought Jones was going to come in to make the catch. Could not. Just played it on about two hops. And shallow left center, so that's a leadoff single for Ryan Sargent. And here's Dan McCauley, who homered in the second. Popped out in the third and flew out in the fifth. It's not always the hardest hit balls that result in singles, but they all go in the book the same. They all go in the book the same. Kent State 7, Northern Illinois 1. So the Huskies are now 10 and 21. Eastern, I'm sorry, Kent State is now 20 and 10. 7 and 3 in the league. Central Michigan beat Toledo 5-3. Throw to first and they picked him off. Pickoff play was on. And Eastern must know that pretty well considering they, they steal a ton of bases so they must practice pickoff moves too and that was a good front, a good one from the lefty Sparks and so forget about all that Sargent picked off so McCauley hits with one gone and nobody on now so I lied to you and said there were a couple of double headers there was just uh, one one was scheduled but then uh, wasn't played in fact Bowling Green in Western Michigan 1-0 the count on McCauley Western did win a solo game today, 9-4 over Bowling Green. The Broncos scored four in the sixth. They were down 3-1 early. Western's 14-15 and 15 and 4-6. And 1-1, swung through a breaking ball. It is 1-2. Base is clear, one gone. Bottom of the eighth inning, 4-3 Ohio with the lead. Doubleheader starting at either 9 or 10 tomorrow morning. Sparks from the stretch. Here it is. That's high. Two and two. Ohio softball has rolled off six in a row and 15 of 16. Swept Akron in a doubleheader at home today. They're 24 and 13 and 12 and one in the MAC. Swinging bunt up the chalk at first settles on the foul grass. We'll do it again at two and two. They lost a game in the series at Northern Illinois, Bobcat softball, but that's, that's it. They're just bashing home runs all over the place. Went to the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. Got to figure they've got a shot this year. Maybe do some damage. Two and two the count on Dan McCauley, Ohio's catcher. Here it is from Sparks. Swing and a foul tip into the mid of Eastern's catcher, Gora. Strike three. That's a first strikeout for Sparks. That's his 16th on his season. McCauley goes down. And here is Traven Funderburg. One of the fabulous Funderbergs. Not to be confused with the fabulous Thunderbirds of wrestling fame from back in the day. And the pitch. Got under it, popped it up. Way up there. This is on the first base side. Now back of the mound, and the second baseman, Hager, makes the catch. And the inning is done. So we go to the ninth, 4-3 Cats. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.
Hopefully the win in the Glass City last weekend. Struggled a bit in midweek on Wednesday night against Shawnee State. But any good closer has to have a short-term memory in the demeanor of a closer. And Rowan certainly has that. Eli Gora, Schenker, and Jones scheduled 5, 6, and 7 in the Eastern lineup. That is Nick Jones. His brother Nate is the leadoff hitter. And hopefully we don't see him tonight the rest of the way. 4-3 Cats as we're in the ninth. Game one of the three-game series and a doubleheader tomorrow. Meeting once, 18 all-time between these two schools, and there's a blazing hot fastball for a strike to the right-handed hitter, Gora. It is 0-1. Eastern leads the all-time series, 67-54, two classic Mac schools. There's a line drive to left, hit pretty well. It's over the head of Fabic and off the wall. Plays it on a short hop, rifles it back in, and it's up beyond the bag at second, and if it was on line, they would have had a chance. But Gora slides in for a leadoff double here in the ninth. And for whatever reason, Jake Rowland's given up some contact and some hard hit balls this year. Gora with the double. That is his third on the season. That's a third for the Eagles tonight. Here is Colton Schenker. So the tying runner is 180 feet away. Time called. Schenker is just to the right of the plate area, but now they're going to get a pinch runner. It's going to be Joey Swigert. Redshirt sophomore from Saline, Michigan. Swigert wears six. He's on there to pinch run now for Gora. So it's going to be tough. A long look over to the dugout here for the hitter, Schenker, to see if maybe they want to move this runner over. With that in mind, Giannini is in on the third base grass, and Rudy Rote's in a little bit at first as well. So Rowan props up his glove arm underneath his chin as he spins the ball with his right hand behind him. Now ball meets glove at his belt, and a bluff move back to second. That was just to see if Eastern would tip its hand. Schenker tonight with two singles, and he popped out. This is the six-hole hitting, left-handed hitting, DH. Has a bit of a close stance. Will he be bunting? Swigert at second. He's holding. He's not bunting. It's low and inside. It's 1-0. Wouldn't expect a straight steal here either. This is only the fifth game Swigert has come into. He does have one stolen base in one attempt, but we have talked a lot tonight about Eastern's aggressiveness on the base paths. Just don't see him going for a straight steal with the possibility of having the tying run thrown out at third to start this top of the ninth. 1-0 pitch coming from Rowan. Schenker waits. A long pause, the kick and the pitch. Swing and a miss, just blew it right past him, belt high. It's 1-1. One one. The Eagles scored one in the sixth, two in the second. Ohio with two in the first, one in the second, one in the fourth. Two homers tonight. McCauley and Rote, the 1-1 one -one pitch. Strike. Fastball on the outside edge. That wasn't the blazing hot heater. But it got it over on the black to the left-handed hitter. It's one and two. Rowan this year with 19 strikeouts. Schenker has struck out 23 times. The one-two pitch. Swinging a pop-up foul out of the ballpark, third base side. We'll do it again at one and two. Rowan has been so good as a closer over the last couple of years now. Last year was the, the primary bulk of his work. That it's, it's interesting to see him struggle a bit. One, two, cold, strike three. Didn't struggle there. A little paint on the outside edge. Schenker strikes out. And that's a big K here in the top of the ninth with the runner at second and one gone at Ohio on top 4-3 on Eastern Michigan. Here is Nick Jones, who is a 226 hitter. Doubled in the second, was stranded. He's struck out twice. 
Right-handed hitter wears 14. Lights on to the ballpark, but a very comfortable night. This thing has happened pretty quickly. Tidally played two hour and 15 minute game to this point. 4-3 Cats in the ninth. The Eagles trying to battle back. Jones, the third baseman, lines one to left, dumps in for a base hit. Fabic over, gloves, taking third and trying to score. Swigert, the throw is cut off. We're tied at four on an RBI emphatic single by Nick Jones to left. The Eagle dugout explodes. A fist pump from Jones. Blown save for Roan. We're no better than when we started here in the top of the ninth. One gone, and we're level at four. Eight hits on the night now for the Eagles. And just all the runners, Ohio left stranded. They feel very haunting at this point. They, they really should. Credit to Eastern here because Rowan's deliveries have been crisp, but they've gotten to him. And even though Rowan has struggled a little bit more so than he normally does, he still has good stuff, and the Eagles have to put a good swing on the ball to connect. And they have tonight. Going to get a pinch hitter here? We do. It is John Rensel Jr., left-handed hitter, first pitch swinging, popped it up near the screen, and the Bobcat dug out. McCauley threw caution to the wind and made the catch in the Ohio on deck circle, and that's two big outs. Rensel Jr., first pitch swinging, a 245 hitter, just popped out. If we were playing with wood bats, that would have broken it. I mean, that was in on the hands, completely tied him up. So here's Shane Easter, popped out in the second, grounded out in the fifth, doubled in the seventh. Time called, goes over to the third base coach to chat. He's the nine-hole hitter. And now Ohio will bring the infield, at least Rote and McCauley, in to talk to Rowan. So a leadoff double really started things for the Eagles here. Then a strikeout, then the RBI single, the pop out. And here is Easter, who is a 195 hitter, but he did double in the seventh. Popped out in the first, grounded out in the fifth, hits here now with a runner on and two gone in the ninth, and a ball game tied at four. The Eagles have played a ton of close games this year. Yep. The pitch misses inside from Roan. It's 1-0. Yeah, and, and arguably the numbers would say it's in the Bobcat favor to be playing in a tight game with Eastern Michigan. They've lost a lot of tight games, but there comes a point when you play so many that you're going to get one here and there. The Bobcats try and prevent that from being tonight. 1-0 pitch. Missed inside. 2-0. Ohio just hasn't been clutch with runners on tonight. The Bobcats are 1 for 14 with runners on base. Wow. Is that right? There's the strike. It is 2 and 1. Sounds about right. And how many, uh, how many left on? Eight. Eight runners left on. 1 for 9 or with, uh, with two outs. 1 for 10 with runners in scoring position. 2 and 1 the count, 2 gone. A runner at first and the pitch to Easter. Fouled off, first base side and out of play. Rowan a strike away from getting to the dugout. Which, in, and that's kind of been the story at points of conference play so far. Chunks of runs one day and then not executing the next and putting yourself in a tight spot like the Bobcats sit tonight. Weekend number four of Mac play. The 2 2 pitch. That shot foul down the right side. We'll do it again at 2 and 2. And again, tonight, the Bobcats up by a run, gave themselves a chance going into the ninth. But you want, you want that insurance. You want just a little bit of help, even when you have a great closer like Jake Rowan. Two and two, the count with two gone. And the pitch. It's called strike three on the inside edge. So two strikeouts for Rowan. He has 21 on his season. But the Eagles tied up on an RBI single by Nick Jones after... The leadoff double, and we go to the bottom of the ninth. Eastern four, Ohio four. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.
blew the save, and then the Bobcats were able to claw back in it against Shawnee State. Well, not claw back in it, but walk off. We'll see if it's the same here. <laughs> Tied up at four, Ohio and Eastern. The first one to Garcia is a strike on the outside edge. It looked to be low and outside, but the zone has shifted a bit tonight, and it's shifted for both ball clubs. Owen won the count on Garcia, who doubled back in the first. And the pitch. Check swing, couldn't hold it up. On a breaking ball, it's 0-2. Yeah, I guess if it's, uh, if it's not going to be consistent, at least let it be consistently inconsistent for both teams, huh? When it comes to the strike zone. That is a form of consistency. 0-2 pitch coming up. After the high leg kick, swing and a miss. Garcia had no chance on that one. It was low and outside, and he fanned on it. One gone here in the bottom of the ninth in a ball game tied at four. Here's Michael Klein. Number 27, Michael Klein. Well, as you mentioned, it is set up for Roque potentially, but Klein would like to get something done here. That would be one heck of a week and one heck of a game. Already a home run today. Here's Klein, and he takes a breaking ball strike. It is 0-1. Right-handed hitting DH won't pitch this weekend. Still... Feeling the effects of that injury he suffered in the MAC opening weekend at Bowling Green a couple of weekends ago. Sparks for Klein. Eyed it all the way in, takes a strike. He didn't like the call, an extra little knee bend there, now walks out of the box. 0 oh 2. Sparks, 2 and a third to this point, two hits, two strikeouts. The kick in the 0 2, high. They appeal, he didn't go around. They go to the first base umpire. One and two the count. Double header tomorrow, and it's a quick turnaround. Either at 9 or 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Mm. One, two pitch with the bases clear and one gone. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wow. Fastball that was low. Klein tried to reach and golf it out. But that fastball from Sparks certainly had some sparks to it. Here's Rudy Rote. Well, it's set up for him. Seven home runs on the season. One tonight. It was a solo shot in the fourth to right. There is no wind. Two gone. Bases clear. Bottom of the ninth. He did it on Wednesday night. Can he do it again? He takes a strike. It is 0-1. And Sparks is really working the edges pretty well here. Back-to-back -back K's here in the ninth. The 0-1 pitch to Rudy Rote. Swing and a bouncing ball to second. Kaufman there. Centers it up, throws to first in time. And tip your cap to Mitchell Sparks. He goes 1-2-3 with two K's against the top three in the Ohio nine. And we go to extras. Ohio and Eastern Michigan tied at four. And we go to the 10th next on AM 1340 WOUB.
13 strikeouts, 14 walks, one, two, and three scheduled here for the Eagles. Nate Jones, Max Schumann, and Zach Owings, who are tonight a combined one for 12, and you wonder how long that will last. The pitch, breaking ball, misses a outside, it's 1-0. Eastern's last extra inning game was a loss on March the 23rd, 4-3 to Miami. That was an 11. They have played four extra inning contests this year, and there's a rope to right through the 3-4 hole, and that's a leadoff single for Nate Jones. His first hit in five plate appearances. Here's Max Schumann, one of the best hitters in the league, who is 0 for 4, and you wonder how long that will last. Lead-off single here to start the 10th in a ball game that is tied at four. Ohio lost an extra inning affair to Ryder on February the 18th, 6-5. Lost to Moorhead State, 9-8. Lost to Northern Illinois, 6-5. Beat Shawnee State in overtime, extra innings, 6-5 on Wednesday night. So not a lot of success for Ohio. One and three in extra inning contests this year. So back-to-back -back games in extra innings. One against an NAIA team, the other tonight against a MAC crew. 1-0 pitch, squared to bunt, did Schumann, pulled it back. It's 2-0. Runner at first, top of the 10th. Ball game tied at four. So some ninth inning magic for the Eagles. Team that saw Ohio in the championship game last year. Blessing from the belt. The shot put pitch, square to bunt, took a strike. I thought it was 2-0. It is 1-1, one one. my apologies. 1-1 one one the count. On Max Schumann. Where's 17? Out of Portage, Michigan. Blessing from the belt. And a throw to first, chases Jones back. And again, the Eagles, one of the top teams in the country in stolen sacks. You wouldn't figure with Schumann up that they would try Jones, but they want to get that man in scoring position any way they can. He is three for eight. Schumann, by comparison, is 16 for 19 in stolen sacks. One, one, square to bunt, pulled it back. It's low. On a breaking ball, it's two and one. Double play would be nice here, too, if you're the Cats. It'd be hard to do in this situation. Well, with, with the bunt on, I realize that. But if the bunt were to come off and you're having this guy swing away. <laughs> yes, that would be nice. We'd have to get a little further down That's the line why you here. want to get to two balls and two strikes. 2-1, two, pop Which up, you're there. Bunt, oh. Just over our heads. Thought we were going to have a chance to make a play for the first time, Russ, for that, me. That would have been the second time in 10 years that a foul ball came back in the booth. So now this is where I should say... The double play may be in effect if you take off the bunt sign, and that would be huge for the Bobcats. Interesting also to see if maybe the runner's going to try and protect against that. Well, there is a lot at play here. The Eagles generally pick wisely. The bunt might not entirely be off here. Yep. Two and two the count. Nobody gone. Top of the tenth. Ball game tied at four. Runner at first. He's holding, and that's fouled off. Bunt's off now. And Schumann who's over 350 with the average. Has been good all year, but not tonight. 0 for 4, their shortstop. The Eagles have out hit Ohio 9-7. They've scored two unanswered here, one in the sixth, one in the ninth. Schumann waits close to the plate, right-hand side. The pitch from Blessing with Nate Jones at first and a throw to first, back in time as a runner. Ohio had a runner picked off, failed on picking off a runner earlier, scored on two airs earlier, but couldn't do more with runners on, left the bases loaded earlier. Eastern has capitalized on, on some chances. Ohio has not, but it's still a 4-4 game. Fly ball foul over the screen and out of play. It's certainly not been the cleanest or most well-played baseball game we've ever seen. But you're not really worried about how pretty you look. You're more concerned about who's going to have the W at the end of the day, which I know that's cliche, but it's true. You just want to get out with a win. That's all you're worried about. 
blessing from the stretch. Jones with a good lead, held on by Rote. He's holding, the pitch is low, it's three and two. Well, you talk about momentum. And, and here, whoever wins this contest tonight, you just go back to your beds, quick sleep, try to carry that momentum into a nine or 10 o'clock start tomorrow morning. Payoff pitch, runner at first, Schumann waits. That was a fastball pickoff attempt. Rote did well just to field it back in time as Jones. Giannini is guarding the line, back of the bag at third. Now the outfield shifts a little bit. There's a little bit of hitting room in left center. Three and two the count. Runner going, fly ball foul. Out of play. A little cat and mouse game. Schumann, a good bat man. You'd figure that this team would pick wisely. Ohio did cut down a base stealer earlier. Heck of a throw by McCauley on that play too. So Corey Blessing, third pitcher used tonight for the Cats at full on Schumann with a runner going and another foul ball. It's out of play, more baseballs delivered. And as far as encounters go, this is as dramatic as we've seen tonight. Boy, and McCauley's just dying for a chance to throw the runner out. He's popping up out of that crouch quick. But you got to strike out the batter first if you want a chance at that. That would be part one of the strikeout, throw out, double play. Blessing would love his 20th strikeout to come against Schumann. Three and two the count. Nobody gone. Top of the tenth. Runner goes. Another foul ball. Wow. This is a... Heck of an at-bat. You would figure it would be pretty good with the drama of the situation. Schumann, one of the Eagles' best, if not their best. And Blessing, who's turned out to be a blessing for the Bobcat bullpen. One more time here with the runner at first. Will this be the pitch of distinction? Here it is from Blessing instead of throw to first. Part of this, too, on throwovers is just to get Jones a little tired on the dive back. He's already started, and there have been foul balls. Yeah, wear him out a little bit. Try and slow down that step. We're tied at four in the tenth. Back into the box, it's Schumann. Will this be the pitch? Payoff pitch, runner goes. Fly ball down the line and right, curling foul and towards the bullpen, out of play. Wow. This feels like extra inning baseball. And it feels like a lot's on the line. The Eagles trying to get to two over 500 in league play. Ohio trying to get to break even. This is game 10 of the MAC for both ball clubs. The opener of the fourth MAC weekend. Three and two the count on Schumann. Blessing has given him everything he's had, or he has. Payoff pitch, runner goes. Cold strike three, throw down to second, and they got him! Bang, bang! Strike him out, throw him out, double play. Bases clear, two gone. Jones was absolutely out by Two feet on the tag that was supplied by Levy, Ohio's second baseman. Wow. So no contact, a strikeout. Schumann 0 for 5 on the night. Here is Zach Owings, fly ball left center field in there for a base hit. Big turn at first, Garcia up with it. Trying for second is Owings, the throw is late. That shouldn't have been a double, but it was. Yep, I, I, you know, and, and not not trying to be ultra critical there, but slightly lackadaisical in the outfield allows the runner to take a second base there. And then rushing the throw once they the realization was made that the runner was going to second base, so there was no shot. 
And so now you got two outs and a runner at second. And and the only reason it's important to bring it up is we've seen the mistakes turn into runs. We've seen the mistakes take away runs for the Bobcats. You don't need to add another to the list. But I will say one thing I was going to say about McCauley. He's sending a message tonight. Don't run on me. If you're Eastern Michigan, if you're Miami coming up, if you're Kent, don't run on me. McCauley has been playing fantastically defensively behind the plate as a catcher. It has been an impressive thing to watch. Well, Owings was thinking double out of the box. He's 180 feet away in a ball game that's tied at four in the top of the 10th. The Eagles' 10th hit of the night. Here is Timko, the cleanup hitter. Right-handed hitter, takes one low, it's one and oh. It is four, five, and six scheduled for the Cats in the bottom of the 10th inning. Fabic, Levy, and Giannini. One-zero pitch coming to Timko, who's 0 for three on the night. Swing and a miss. One and one. So they've had some traffic. The Eagles in the tenth inning and the ninth innings tonight. Tied it in the ninth. Ohio trying to shut them down in the tenth. The one-one pitch from Blessing. Foul tip at the plate. It's one and two. So after a strike him out, throw him out, double play in extra innings, you would normally exhale. But the Eagles caught their breath in a hustle double for Owings. Makes everybody tense again. One and two with two gone on the pitch. Swing and a little bouncer over the mound. Going to be a tough play. Thunderbird Fields throws to first late. Staying at third is Owings. An infield single by Timko, and the Eagles have been hustling here in the 10th. The 11th hit on the night, the first for Timko in four plate appearances. And here is Kaufman. This is Jared Kaufman. And Rob Smith is going to trot out to the mound. There is activity in the Bobcat bullpen. We'll see if a change is made here. Kaufman is a freshman from Springboro, Ohio, 5'10", 170. Town Hall meeting. All the infield in, the battery, and Rob Smith. Two gone here in the 10th in a ball game that's tied at four. So extras tonight, extra baseball tomorrow with a double header. We're really checking a whole lot of boxes here. Your baseball bingo card this weekend is going to be yep filled up fast meeting done blessing stays in so this is Jared Kaufman right-handed hitter didn't start tonight hits here now in the 10th Kaufman, a 240 hitter. This is his 21st game. 18 for 75 on the season. Runners on the corners, two gone. Top of the 10th, ball game tied at four. Overhand breaker misses high. It is 1 0. It's where it crosses the plate, not where it ends up. It looked good in the mitt. Instead, it's a ball to start. Another close game. And Eastern's starting to get used to him, as are the Bobcats. 1-0 pitch coming from Corey Blessing. Fastball strike right down Court Street. It's 1-1. One one. We were in the 80s today in Athens. Not in the 80s anymore, but it is a very comfortable night, and I'm sure a very festive night around town and maybe wherever you are this evening. So cheers to that. And cheers to getting out of a jam here in the 10th. The 1-1 from Blessing to Kaufman. Swing and a pop-up. Coming back behind the plate. Does McCauley have room? He does not. It's about three rows back behind and to the left of home plate. One and two the count. Tomorrow's game was scheduled to be at 3 o'clock. 
but with the rain that we're expecting in southeast Ohio tomorrow afternoon and really all Sunday, that's why there's going to be a doubleheader. The Eagles took a series from Oklahoma State, and now they have a runner that started from first who will just walk to second. They try to induce a throw, and they would have started from third home. Instead, it's runners on second and third now. Blessing, at first, wasn't paying attention. Then he stepped off the rubber, faked a throw to third, and they just let the runner have second. So, Timko at second, the one-two shot down the line and right. It is going to stay fair and go into the corner. That was fair by a foot, two-run score, hitting second and stopping as Kaufman. Eastern leads at 6-4. That is the third hit on the night for the Eagles that was a foot fair. This one, the biggest of them all. The first two were halfway down the lines. This one was socked to the corner and right. And the Eagles have scored three in the last two, and they lead it 6-4 here in the 10th. Kaufman with the double. Didn't start the game, but he may have well finished it there. And you know, it, all the credit to Eastern Michigan, but you said it right. It, it's harder to see a more unlucky spot than the way the Bobcats have given up so many base runners tonight. So many balls just barely fair down the line. I've never seen anything like it. I here's, really have not. Yeah, here's Colton Schenker. So the first plate appearance for Kaufman, and he hung in the count and then rifled it down the line and right. Battled well. There was a lot of activity. Blessing did a really good job of handling the situation with the runner going towards second base. Uh, instead of letting Eastern Michigan steal a run from them, the way that we saw Northern Illinois run that same play earlier this season to take a lead late, but just a huge double there that, that completely changes things, breaks the tie. And Corey Blessing's night is done. Ohio's going to go to the pen again. Wow. So Salisbury pitched really well, really well. Probably deserved a better fate. The Eagles get to Ohio's all-time saves king, bounce him from the game. Corey Blessing is probably the second best man all told out of Ohio's pen. He gives it up here and Ohio has to go to that left field corner one more time. And now in the 10th inning, Eastern's on top 6-4, two gone. Runner at second. We'll pause for 60 seconds and tell you about the new Bobcat pitcher after this on AM 1340 WOUB. Rob Smith's going to have an aneurysm. It's been a weird... It's been a weird year. Yeah. Right field line. Ohio goes to the bullpen. It is Brett Manis, M A N I S, freshman from Port Huron, Michigan. So north of Detroit. Two gone. Top of the tenth continues. Manis in there now. Left handed arm for the Cats. Four and a third innings of work. Two hits, one run, nine strikeouts, eight walks. Colton Schenker on there now for the Eagles. Their DH. Singled twice. Popped out, struck out looking. Hits here now from the left side. 
Kennedy with the two RBI double. Their 12th hit on the night. The 0-1, big swing and a miss. It's 0-2. Fabic, Levy, and Giannini scheduled for Ohio. Not a hit to be found out of them tonight. Fabic was a defensive replacement. 0-2 the count, two gone here in the 10th. And Ohio is down now by two. Main is from the stretch. The kick and the pitch outside. And McCauley might have been crossed up there just the way he caught that ball. It is one and two. Eastern tonight, five for 10 with runners in scoring position. And six for 15 with runners on. Ohio stranded eight. They're one for 10 with runners in scoring position. Two solo homers and two uh, runs scored on airs. One, two, low and outside, two and two. There have been opportunities. And Eastern, most certainly late, has capitalized on theirs. The former Hurons, current Eagles, battling tonight. And the 2-2, low and outside, 3-2. and two. The year still has a lot left in it, but there have been a lot of oddities and just tough moments this season. Eastern's made plays tonight to tie and now take the lead. Three and two the count, runner at second, two gone. Two in and Eastern looking for more. Shanker waits, their DH hits 273 and just stuck the bat on the ball and pops it foul, third base side now to play. That's been the other thing about some of these at-bats. They're battling. They have been battling at-bats. They've seen a lot of pitches. They've fouled off a lot. They have made Ohio work. And they've earned it. I mean, oh, no doubt. They have certainly earned being up by two at this point. They've come back here, and their top hitter's 0 for 5 tonight. That says a lot, too. Here it is from Manus on 3-2. Foul tip into the mid of McCauley. Strikeout number 10 on Manus's season. Eastern strands a runner, but that's Kaufman, who brought in two on a rip of a double down the line and right. Eastern Michigan, 6. Ohio, Four. Bottom of the 10th, next. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB. Well, this is a guy who carries himself like he is from Texas. Wide, wide world of Texas. Ego, and it is in the Piney Woods, just north of Houston, uh, north of Conroe by eight miles. So Stephen F. Austin territory yeah, up there? Yeah, exactly. Similar, yes. Here's Fabic, his first at bat tonight. He hits 250. He is two for eight, right handed hitter against. The guy they call the Cowboy, Mitchell Sparks. He's got the hat and the boots and the whole deal. Murphy's got spurs as well. <laughs> one and one the count. Jingle, jangle, jingle. Yes, indeed. Fabic waits in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Just blew it past him. Whatever he was looking for wasn't that. 
an emergency hack, one and two. So from Willis, Texas to Ypsilanti, Michigan to here with us in Athens, Ohio tonight, Mitchell Sparks, one, two, low. And that just seems like a Texas name to me. Yes, I wonder if I ever saw uh, Mitchell Sparks play back in high school. I wouldn't know, but I mean, it is a small world. It definitely could have happened. You from Houston? Yes. 2-2 two -two pitch coming up. Can Favic stay in there? Loops it foul. Out of play. Two for Ohio in the first, one in the second, then one in the fourth, and goose eggs since. You know, Texas isn't exactly that small world state, obviously. No. Um, whereas in Ohio, the elite ball players all probably know each other a little bit better playing in tournaments, but, but Conroe's close enough. To Houston. 2-2. Two -two, bouncing ball to short. Schumann's there to his left. Sucks it up. Throws on the side to first to retire Fabic by a couple of steps. One down to the Bobcat 10th and a 6-4 Eastern Michigan lead. <coughs> if Ohio doesn't come back to win this ball game, my first question to Rob Smith will be there, there could be a lot of reasons why Ohio lost it tonight, but what sticks out? Because there could be a lot of things and a lot of ways that he could go with that. Obviously, that's moot if Ohio comes back and somehow wins it because they'll have to show the grit the Eagles did in the ninth and 10th yep. to get it done, but it certainly is possible. Levy tonight, the second baseman, is 0 for 4. Two strikeouts and two flyouts. Left on left here in the 1-0. Fastball strikes, and Sparks is 3 and a third out of the pen now. 18 strikeouts to four walks, not tonight, but in totality of his season. Three strikeouts and no walks tonight. Ohio has two hits against him and no runs. 1-1 one, one hangs outside. It is 2-1. You know, talking about what Rob Smith might say, I mean, you know, he always approaches it from the team aspect, but it is unfortunate that Rowan has had two chances and hasn't been able to convert this past week. The kick in the 2-1, fisted foul towards the Eastern dugout. And that's why you say it could be a long list if it comes to that point, because you look at, we gave our closer a chance, couldn't close the door, uh, but also we gave ourselves chances to score many more than four runs tonight. And the list can go on and on. 2-2, two -two, living outside, good eye by Levy. Ohio has two bullets left, at least from the outs standpoint. Two of the three Eastern airs were in the first inning. Payoff pitch, one gone, bases empty in the pitch. Fly ball, center field, starting in and breaking back as Jones now settles under the ball, makes the catch. In front of the warning track, about 400 feet away from straight away center. 400 feet away from home plate in straightaway center. Two gone here in the bottom of the 10th. Ohio down by two, and it's up to Tony Giannini, who tonight is 0 for 4. Sargent, the only Bobcat with multiple hits. Garcia, Klein, Rote, and McCauley all with one. Two gone, bases clear, bottom of the 10th, and Sparks keeps on slinging it, 0 and 1. It has been an entertaining albeit maddening ball game from the Bobcats standpoint. 0-1, hit on the ground to third, to his left, Owings, takes a crow step, throws low to first, dug out, ball game over. Rensel Jr. dug it out on the backhand, and Ohio is undone in extra innings tonight. 6-4 Eastern Michigan with the win. One in the ninth, two in the tenth, and Ohio just didn't do enough from the fifth inning on to win it tonight. 6-4 Eastern Michigan. That's the ball game. Stay tuned. Our post-game report is next. This is Bobcat Baseball on AM 1340 WOUB.